Hey everybody, this is Ruben from Pop Goulash. I uh, just wanted to reach out to everybody and say, hey, you can follow us on social media on Facebook at facebook.com slash pop goulash. You can also follow us on Twitter at pop goulash. Uh, if you want to participate with the show, please feel free to email us at popgoulash42 at gmail.com. And we also have a voicemail number where if you want to leave us a voicemail, let us know how we're doing or have any suggestions for us. You can reach us at 224-325-4235. And we will see you soon. Thank you very much. And let's get this show on the road. those ear goggles bitches it's time for some pop goulash i am ruben and tonight in the studio i have a repeat quintupletorianistic group i don't know i'm making up words at this point but uh we can call ourselves that but our homies from dwight's comics are back and uh ready to talk comics dwight looks like he's about to pass out he's tired it's been a long day (laughs) and uh Chad just o- is about to open his third Red's Wicked Ale. <laughs> if you want a manly drink, we have plenty of like whiskey and you know beer. <laughs> it's a uh, kiwi strawberry. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. I'm surrounded by children. Oh my god! Seriously. I mean, we are your kids. Yeah, so, right. I mean, so speak, are my kids. So. Yeah, that's what happens when uh, when you work a, a small business retail man. Yeah. There's not much that they won't know about you. This is true. This is true. You fart in the back room, they could tell you what you had for lunch. <laughs> Chad. Oh. <laughs> Chad's turning red. <laughs> much like this Red's Wicked Ale can, kind of matches up. So, how you guys been doing? It's been a couple. Uh, about a month or so, so two, three, yeah, since you were here last time. It's, it's been great. Um, How's the biz? The biz has been going good. Actually, we are excited to announce that we are moving to a new location. We are um, going to be at 2307 West Schaumburg Road. So just a little further just west little down the further road. west down the road. Farther um, away from Schaumburg, closer to me, which I enjoy. I'm, I'm here to accommodate. We are... Um, directly behind the Dunkin' Donuts, for those of you that are looking for a landmark. Um, and the reason and that I picked coffee. that location is that I can mainline uh, donuts and coffee now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're moving. Actually, um, we will close our store on next Wednesday and open the new store on Thursday. There's so, no rest for the comic book people. When, 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 when are we going to be able to get our, our books? You can get your books at, on Wednesday at the old store. Okay. Or on Thursday at the new store. Okay, so like Wednesday, you're just going to be like, you're just going to let people, like there's going to be nothing in the store but bags. You're like, here's your shit, get out. Pretty much. That's that's the way it's going to be. Nice. You know, no browsing. This ain't no library. <laughs> <laughs> get out. Well, I, I I don't know why I'm having a heart attack. I'm going to be in Detroit next week anyway, so oh, well, you won't even you see me until Saturday. Right. So. And we're going to do an actual grand opening on the 1st of September. Um, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, well, there'll be balloons, and you know I'll dress up Chad First, as Pennywise. Half a like second that. there, I thought you were going to say there's going to be baloney. Bal- <laughs> I mean, I'm like, if you want baloney, we got I mean, baloney. We can get you baloney. <laughs> if you want to add that to your poll list, <laughs> <laughs> if you want baloney, I'll get you baloney. I'll have you baloney by three o'clock. That's right. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're excited about the move. Um, everybody that we've talked to has been very. Um, nice about it you know that's that store has been in that location for over 30 years and so um as with anything that goes on with change some people are a little um i don't know what the right word is apprehensive Uh, apprehensive thank you so much look at it this way in in our community the geek community Mm -hmm. you can't change no at all no and that's because you people get all ocd and and like like Definitely, definitely can't move the can't can't move the store. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, can't can't move move the store. I, I can't find I can't find Avengers two thirty seven. Where's Avengers two thirty seven? What like, Batman got the trunks again? What the heck? What's going on? I don't understand. What's going <laughs> Seriously. on? Seriously, people lose their minds. Yes, but um, 
I, I've tried to reassure as many people as possible that, you know, all of the books that you're looking for, we will still have. Um, they, they will just be in a different location now. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be great. We're so how's, how's the build-out coming? It's, it's been going great. Um, we've, um, it's a smaller location um, by about, what do you say, four or 500 square feet? Probably. 500, yeah. exactly. I, I'm, you know. I've been drinking, um, and but we're it's forcing us to be creative with our space, um, and it's 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 great. But I, sometimes, we, like too much space is too much space, right? You right. know, because when you have too much space, then you feel like an obligation to fill it with stuff, right? You and know, sometimes that stuff is crap, like you know, seventy five lion cat figures. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, there is a sale going on right now at Dwight's Comics. If you come in and buy an action figure, you will get a lion cat uh, pop. So come on in and buy an action figure, buy a statue, get a lion cat pop. Well, buy, anything. buy anything and get a lion cat pop. We got too many of these fucking lion cat pops. You know, and that's sad, too, because like, I figured those would be like hotcakes, man. Like, Well, obviously, so did my buyer, but um, we were we were all mistaken. Yeah. But yeah, look, it's like like I I bought the original Lion Cat from you guys, and then you guys had the the limited edition, which is the one that you can't give away, right? And it's 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 got a bloody mouth, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck, people? Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, um, it was that, and what was the other thing we couldn't give away? Oh, Hero Clicks. For God's mm-hmm. sakes, people! I had Hero Clicks that I was giving away, and literally people were giving them back to me. They were free. <laughs> I, I I don't understand. Dude, my kid still plays with the Incredible Hulk one you gave him on Free Comic Book. Well, so your kid is most awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. But these other people, I would like, hey, and you want this free? Thing? Oh no, I don't want that. It's like a mini statue. Even if you don't play the game, it's like, oh, that's kind of cool. It, it's weird. It's like. When people walk in, you try and give them free stuff. They're like, "No, no." I mean, uh, free is the best stuff ever. Well, yeah. maybe, well my wife is over here very Look, quietly let's whispering talk, in Let's my ear. talk about you two giving away free stuff. Okay, do you remember that? A couple years back, I think it was with the iPhone six. You two gave away a copy of their album. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. and it yeah. downloaded I, yeah. automatically I to have everybody's that phone. Download on my phone, and I'm like, "Why?" It, it's not an awful record, but it's like, you know, they're like, "Here, it's free." Everyone can have it, and people are like, "Fuck you too." <laughs> That's right. Like, um, you just can't you realize win. You too was still making albums. Oh yeah, dude. Oh yeah. I was just kind of like, they're, they're still doing stuff. Really? Yeah. All right. And they just released an album earlier this year. Oh really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Songs of experience. Friends of mine are like all about it, about it. And Chad's drunk already. He's... Chad's already <laughs> drunk, and 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 yeah. Okay. I just don't want to super red and sweaty when I drink, so it's like. <laughs> I don't want to fi- look. I'm going to treat you like my kid. I don't want to find that toothpick on the floor, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am all good. <laughs> it's like I'm clearing off beer bottles everywhere, and so what's uh, what do you think the um, not to deviate from the new store because that's going to be awesome. September first, yes. yes. hard grand opening. Yes, that sounds a lot dirtier than I meant it to. Well, because before then it'll be a soft opening. Oh yeah, and you can't push rope like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm super stoked. I'm super stoked to see what you guys are going to do with the space and and how you guys are going to uh, what, what it's going to look like. It, I'm, yeah, we've I'm got excited. some. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It it's it really is. And uh, don't take my word for it. Come check us out. Yeah, three oh seven with Sean Berger. Is the phone number going to stay the same? No. Oh, you're um, getting a new phone number. We're going to have a new phone number. That was a hard uh, we, no. That was a hard like, no. Are you going to having um, the same phone number? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that if no you, no no. That's the phone number six three zero f u c k y o u. You get right to Dwight's Comics. Oh, good. <laughs> no, unfortunately, they have not given us the uh, the new phone number as of yet, but. Um, when it does come out, I will definitely give it to you so you can put it in uh, Absolutely. To, to, to promote that along with everything else. Yep. New, new place, new number, and all your comic books will come with that new that new shop smell. That new shop smell. There you go. Which, okay. surprisingly, is like paint and turpentine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but your books will not smell like paint and turpentine. <laughs> no, 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 no. They will be kept pristine condition. Yes. They will smell like goodness. Unless Diamond fucks up and, sells, and sends you guys like a box with a hole in the middle of it. Which, surprisingly, has happened. Oh, I'm not surprisingly. <laughs> no, the previous regular shop that I've I had, Dwight, you can use. I brought down a plethora of cups. 
No, that's all right. I like straight from the bottle. Mm. Works for me. <laughs> Dwight is drinking uh, a Smirnoff out of the bottle. Because why not? You know what? I- I'll give it to you this. At least it's not Pop-Off. No. Or uh, or uh, uh, what, uh, what's the uh, the Jewel brand? Jewel is a brand? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jewel makes their own brand? Well. Somebody in the back with a potato masher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you just see this little old lady. She's from Russia. She's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Skull? She's like, not skull. Yeah, skull. Skull, skull, yeah. skull. Skull. I make vodka. You buy. You buy. <laughs> you buy. You drink now. Not here at home. Go. There is no such thing as free sample. You buy sample. You buy sample. Right. Mm-hmm. And in this in this area, that prob- that old Russian lady probably lives somewhere around here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Chad is scared of her. Chad yeah. has an issue with with Russians. They 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 terrify him for some strange reason. Uh, really? Whenever one of them comes into the shop, Chad gets a little nervous. Do you have Winter Soldier? <laughs> I've just had very bad experiences with them coming in the store. Um, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. There's there's I wish long it never complicated stories again. that involve the Russian mob and and and. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. We. We it's the are, restroom. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You know, look, well, there's we, connections I'd rather not talk about. <laughs> but <laughs> see, this is what happens when I get drink. My wife is over here giving me the cut sign. Stop, right. stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. They come to a new store. You gave out the address. What are you doing? <laughs> Give him liquor. Give him liquor. <laughs> <laughs> and Mush- Mother Russia store comes to you. Oh. So, but, but uh, what's what's been the big sellers here recently? Sarah. Oh yeah, Sarah's here. Sarah is yeah. here. I just, I just yeah. wanted to, you know, let people know that we do have a female voice that you can hear, and that's Sarah. According to that one guy who keeps forgetting about me. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, You're never in the store when I come in anymore. When do you come in? I don't know. Random times during the day. Exactly. I work Thursdays and Tuesdays. <laughs> oh well, that's I, those are the days I don't come in. <laughs> And now I'm going to be there loitering and packing up stuff the rest of the week. Fair so, enough. I mean. This is uh, a family affair. But anyway, so what's selling, Sarah? Big sellers. We had a lot of Marvel sellout because they put out a lot of number ones. Um, was it Star Wars released in new? Beckett. 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 I think it's going to be a one shot. Yeah, I read it. it yeah. It is a one shot. I read it today. It's not bad. It's It's pretty interesting, but like. It doesn't lead into Solo. It doesn't, obviously, it doesn't lead out of Solo because like he's dead. It's just like a prequel one-shot story for him, right? Yeah, it's just it's just like a standalone story. Like, it doesn't lead into anything. It's just like, oh, there they are, and they did this thing, and it's over. I mean, I find it so amazing with the Star Wars comics that, for for some weird reason, the Star Wars comics are actually getting the extended universe right, mm-hmm. and they're getting the storytelling right, and the movies just can't get it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> hey, this is me, man. Hey, I'm just waiting for the Naboo zombie, like Gungan movie, and Jar Jar's the last zombie, and the screen goes black, and you hear a blaster shot, and you're like, finally, it's over. Jar Jar's finally gone. The credits entirely roll through all the way at the end. All you hear is Misa back, and you're like, ah, great. <laughs> He's not gone. We're never gonna. We're never oh, gonna get man. away. Oh man, now we're entering into fan fiction territory. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, like later. like. <laughs> Jar Jar and Maz Katana are like hooking up in the back room somewhere. Then it turns into slash fiction. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Misa so horny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyway. Annie, look at this. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? Fantastic Four re-release. Yeah. Did yeah, you, did so you read it? Not yet. No. How was it? Oh, and this is the new guy. New yes, guy. No. I forgot yeah, your John. name. I'm John. John. John's I'm, the I'm new, new guy. guy. He's waving his hand like he's in class right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My name is John. I'm the new guy. Like I'm like all right. I'm standing like I'm sitting right next right to you, right dude. Right so. Uh, but Fantastic Four was, I mean, it's starting off good. They didn't bring everybody back right away, but okay. There's. I won't spoil anything, but they kind of do like a big... It's been out for two weeks. You can go ahead and spoil it. Okay. Or you can come and pick up your copy That's of Dwight's right. Comics, 2307, copy. what Schomburg wrote. Yeah. Uh, but, all right, we'll, we'll spoil it. Basically, Ben Grimm decides to propose to Alicia, and Ben wants to ask Johnny to be the best man, 
but Johnny gets pissed off and he's just kind of like, no, there's only one person that can be your best man and that will be Reed Richards. And Johnny kind of flies up towards the moon for some reason. He starts crying and he comes back down. They all hug it out. And then you see a magical four, uh, four appear in the sky because apparently Reed and Sue have figured out some way to send a message to people. And they're just like, yes, a four. So like, so they shot up a bat signal. Yes. Basically, yes. yes. Um, a big you're four. really not selling this issue. No. It, <laughs> For um, me, what was better was the backup story about Dr. Doom. Okay. He goes so, back to Latervia. Yeah, that's right. Uh, basically, in this time, Latveria has been like, taken over kind of by like rebels and insurgents. So this kind of like street girl breaks into Castle Doom and all these Doom ba- Doom bots are about to kill her and Doom stops them all and he's just like, get out of my castle. I don't give a shit about you. I don't care about anybody. Just leave me the hell alone. I've been God. I've been the ruler. I don't care. And then all of a sudden she's just kind of like, but you know, Doom, you are hope. You are, you know, it's like you are the light of Latveria that we need right now and we're all about to die. And she hands Doom the mask, and he's just like, you know what? I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to do this because I'm Doom, and that's all that matters. And also, you, sure. you see, like, the, I'm not going to do it because you want to do it because I didn't want to yeah. do it to begin with, but I'm going to do it for me. Right. And then you see, like, these Doom Sentinels, and they're about to, like, kill all the, they're about to kill all the people in the town square, and Doom tells them all to shut down. And also, they're like, my lord, do you want us to take up arms? And he's like, no, I'll do it myself. And then he kind of runs into battle like King Leonidas in 300 at the end. He's just like screaming and you see like magic and lightning bolts. I would rather have that be a book. Mm -hmm. Just Doctor Doom fighting forever. Nice. He'd be like like Thor going up against all the uh, dead guys at the beginning of uh, Ragnarok. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like that. Swinging that hammer around. Just playing heavy metal rock all the time. Victor Von Doom versus the world. I mean, didn't we already get that, though? With what? Well, I mean, Secret Wars, he basically uh, re-envisioned the entire world. In... See, I'm not a Marvel guy. I'm not a real, like, steeped in Marvel well, lore. I mean, I'm not really a big Marvel guy either. It's just, like, I have my core characters, but it's, like, kind of every year we get the kind of the same, like, rebooted Marvel event. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Secret Wars, Civil War Two. Right now we're doing Infinity Wars. Again. What what makes it different? NS. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. What makes it different? Well, because what was the one that they had? Um, original Sin. The original yeah. Sin one was actually really damn good. Oh, I loved it. It was very interesting, and it was kind of like it was a new story to tell. I think it was kind of like it was actually like a clever way to actually <clears throat> make retcons acceptable. Mm-hmm. Where you're just kind of like, well, here's a secret that no one's known about for a long time, but guess what? Because this is all from the Watcher. He knew about this, and you're like, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now it makes a that, whole and they of sense. killed the watcher. They, yeah, they killed the watcher, and they gutted out his eyes. Yeah, which was messed up, dude. And, and it, you'll it, never see that in an MCU film. No. <laughs> no. And I, I, what I enjoyed the most about that entire series was that the fact that it was like B and C list characters. Yeah, like it, it wasn't, wasn't yeah, even like A-listers. you're not you weren't gonna see Cap. You didn't see Iron Man. Like Thor was in it, and that's when Thor lost the hammer. Yeah. But it was it. Jason Aaron wrote it, so like that guy hasn't written bullshit, as far oh, as no. I could tell, you know. And it was just a really, really well written story, and even some of the tie-ins were pretty good too. Oh, like yeah. the uh, Hulk versus Iron Man. Did yeah, you read yeah, that yeah, miniseries? Yeah, the, yeah, that was actually really good. Uh, I mean, I just like the Spider Man because it was kind of like a nice little prelude to Spider Verse. Okay, they were building up to at the time where you know. All the spiders are being hunted, and you're like, oh, someone else got bit by the radioactive spider? Yeah, and I was at the you point know? where I'm like, wait a minute, so there are more than two Spider-Men? <laughs> like, I had no idea. I was like, okay, I, I, I accept Miles Morales, I understand that, and I, then Peter Parker, but yeah. and then, like, Gwen Stacy turned into, like, the Harley Quinn Deadpool of the Marvel Universe, where she's oh, in yeah. every fucking thing, <laughs> like Spider-Gwen, and <laughs> Gwen Spider, and Spider-Spider, and Gwen Gwen, oh, yeah. and... You get Gwen Stefani. I don't get yeah. Gwen Stefani. And now <laughs> apparently it's reached a point where they're making the movie into the Spider Verse, where it's kind of like based off of that storyline. But actually, the animation in that looks it looks dope. awesome. And the voice cast that they have for it so far is awesome. Yeah, Jake Johansson is the yeah, uh, he's, is he's Peter, Peter Parker. Parker. They announced Nicolas Cage is going to be Spider Man Noir. 
That is actually yes. Can badass. you picture Nicolas Cage? I'm more of a no, like what? legit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a spider protector. <laughs> but he would just Wait, play do I get, to, fr- do I get he- to freak out and my head bursts on fire? No, Nick, that's a different movie. Right. Different the, movie. The, the, we don't we don't we don't acknowledge that movie. Oh yeah. Uh but yeah, he just did Superman in one of the animated features he, as he well. He finally got his chance to be Superman with Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Yeah, which we still have yet to see. I I mean, from what I've heard, it's, it's fun. pretty funny. Yeah, I've I mean, heard. Pe- I've heard good things. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm behind on my movies. I, well, people yeah. are salty with Teen Titans Go because they canceled Young Justice to put Teen Titans yeah. Go on. But they're bringing uh, Young Justice back so. to the DC yeah. app. You're well, gonna have to, to the DC yeah. app, but you know it is back. Yeah, seventy five dollars a year. Well, or seven ninety nine a month. But yeah. Again, well, that's what like, it that's what it breaks down to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So like, and I'm thinking about it because man. Fuck Batman. We're like, really? <laughs> like, what is up with that? Well, I love it because so many of my friends that, like, they watch, like, the cartoons of the movies. They don't read any of the comic books. And they're mm-hmm. like, Dick Grayson was never like that. Uh, Dick yeah. Grayson. And I was like, um, How do you think he became Nightwing? I was like, He became Nightwing because he got pissed <laughs> off at Bruce. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, he hates yeah. Batman. If you read stuff, you well, know. Well, like, he doesn't hate Batman. But he well, was... in the beginning, he, like, he kind of just had like that animosity and that hatred where he's just like, if I never see you again, I would be perfectly okay with that. See, I, I'm not that deep into like old school Batman. Yeah, like, yeah. That's just, because that was what, early 80s? I think it was actually possibly mid like, 70s or early no, 80s. It no, early 80s. It, it was, was early, early 80s. Because Jason Todd came into the picture in like 87, I want to say. And then they murdered him two years later because he was a prick and via, nobody liked him. Via, yeah, by a vote. Yeah. Call it. Yeah, mm. call in vote. And they got like, and dude, they charged like 99 cents a call for that yeah. too. And like the when they released the issue, it broke their fun fucking phone lines. <laughs> like overwhelmingly. So does, it, does that say something about like fans though? They're just like, yes, kill him. Oh God. Let him die. You know, like... <laughs> Comic fans are like Metallica fans, which are like Fish fans, which are like Star Wars fans. You know, you could never right. truly satisfy them. And then you give them like what they want, and they're like, it's not the same. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of you people. It's not nostalgic enough. Okay, we'll give you a nostalgia story. It's not new enough. It doesn't make me feel like I did when I was four. Well, you know what? You're not four, asshole. Yeah. You're 40. You had a whole <laughs> lifetime of experience between then and now. Chill it, out. It's like that episode of SpongeBob where Man Ray tries to give back Patrick his wallet. You know, it's like comic book fans. It's like, here's a new storyline. That's not my storyline, but you just asked for it. It's not my storyline. Okay. We wrote this because you wanted it too, so take it. Sounds good to me. So take it. I don't want it. Right. Uh, no helping anybody with this. Seriously. But hey, comic books keep on getting churned out, so we keep on buying. This yeah. is true. No matter how many different iterations we need. No matter right. how many different swerves. So we're going to we're going to talk about the thing that pisses me off the most right now. Oh, oh God, here right. we go. <laughs> why? Oh why? Oh why did, did they not? Mary, Bruce, and Selena. What okay. in the actual fuck? <laughs> All right, just to catch everybody up, and uh, for 50 issues of Batman, they've been leading up, and this is just since they re- restarted Batman, what, two, Rebirth, years ago, yeah, two years right. ago? Right. And they've right. been putting out two issues a week, which is way too many fucking comics. Um, <laughs> I, my, seriously, dude, my stack is like this high. I'm st- like, I'm, I can whittle out like two a day, maybe. <laughs> <sighs> But it's keeping this guy paid. Yes, so, yes, like, exactly. and so please, D- Dwight's Comics, 2307 West Schaumburg Road. <clears throat> For now. For now. Yeah. But, uh, like, so basically they've been leading up, like, Batman proposed, and, like, for, like, 25 issues after that, they're, like, they're getting married, they're getting married. It's a big buildup. It's a big buildup. They had, like, one-shots that came out, like, five one-shots that led up to it, and then, like, all this other shit that was going on, and they're, like, it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to end. It didn't happen. And... And Dwight wants to break a bottle and I, shove I, it I into really some do. Tom King's I, face. <laughs> and so now I am hate reading Batman because I want to see the aftermath of this because uh, Tim he hasn't dealt with it. That that um, you know it, I, I have a plan. I really do have a plan. Just stick with it, I, and you guys will see the plan. And I've read three issues, and I don't see the plan. Um, well, they're stuck in this Doctor this, 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 this Mister Freeze story. This, this Mister Freeze storyline, which. Okay, so Bruce bribed his way onto a jury um, because you can do that in Gotham. Um, 
And it's all about how Batman beat the shit out of Mr. Freeze because I guess he was pissed off that uh, Selena, you know, left him at the altar. And he did fuck up Mr. Freeze, though. Well, he really did. <laughs> he, he fucked him up really pretty bad. Um, and then it ends, um, and I'm going to give out spoilers at the end of 53. Oh, God damn it, he goes back to his original yet. costume. Ooh, DC. Oh, God damn it, I haven't so, read that one yet. Nobody gets married. Just, just yell at him. Just tell him no. Nobody gets time, married and everybody goes yeah. back la, to their la, original costume. La, 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 la. So, <laughs> Earmuffs. If you want to read Batman, don't talk to Dwight. Because every time a new issue comes out, you hear him from the back when we walk in. That is hot garbage. It really Get it out of gar- here. And no, what hot garbage was was Catwoman 1. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. You know. Here we go. It was, it was <laughs> horrid. Um... <laughs> And I'm saying that as as a true DC fan, I grew up, you know, with DC comics, and you know, I was excited because it was going to talk about their married life and how they were going to go off on all these adventures together, like you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith or whatever. And no, she's she's jilted and she's feeling all depressed and a whole bunch of bullshit. Um, but you know, I have I have multiple copies at the store. Please come and buy them. The artwork is wonderful. <laughs> Dwight, tell us how you really feel. I'm sorry, but you know, I, as, as, a, as a retailer, I want to sell millions and millions of copies. But as a fan, I was ridiculously pissed off. So, But I'm over it now because I have liquor. <laughs> or he's not because he has liquor. <laughs> That's right. You're not going to be over it because the next issue will come out. And I'll hate read it, and it'll be hot garbage. And Chad sold it for like a second. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, you know, I, <laughs> you, 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 I found something I'm passionate about. You know, sucky comics. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Talk about Batman and the Signal, then. Oh well, that uh, you know, uh, was hot garbage too. Talk about an underutilized character. Like they could do so much with uh, Duke. Oh like, yeah. And, and now he's relegated to like, oh, he works in the daytime, so you'll never see him. Yeah, right. Like, Gotham does not need a daytime hero. I'm sorry. Send him to Central City. They honestly just could have kept the We Are Robin thing, and it would have just worked out Dude, We Are Robin was a dope series. That was awesome. I really enjoyed it a lot. It was really good. Lee Bermejo did the whole thing, didn't he? He did the covers. Did he do the, I thought George he did, Corona did most of the art and Carrie Randolph did a few of it. I thought that he I thought that he did the he was the writer on it as well. He might have been he might have been the writer. I thought he was. I know for sure he did the covers. I know for sure he did covers. Here, give me twenty seconds and I'll look this uh, shit up. The internet exactly. is we our have friend. the technology. So is my app. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's like when We Are Robin came out, I think that just kind of went completely under the radar. It really yeah, did. Lee Bermejo was actually the writer, and he did oh, the really? uh, he did the covers as well. But well, yeah, he Lee wrote Bermejo, it. Lee Bermejo, bring that book back. I don't yeah, know how seriously. much pull you have at DC. Probably I mean, none. <laughs> but hey, bring it back, man! It was an awesome concept. Yeah, and even the Robin Wars was a good concept too. Oh yeah, I re- yeah I like that as well. That was really fun. Yeah. You know, Robins versus Owls. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I kind of wish that they would do more with the Court of Owls. Well, they did a whole hell of a lot with the Court of Owls during the New 52. A lot of it, like, post introducing it in Batman, was just kind of like Dick Grayson just kind of going, I will never join you. You're going to join us, dude. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're just like, hey. You will join us because you had like our insignia in your molar. Yeah, after after Bruce bitch slapped him and That's knocked right. it out. That, now that was a good scene when bitch Bruce slapped him and the, and the, the molar. Bitch fell Bruce out. slapped him. <laughs> bitch Bruce slapped him. That bitch Bruce bitch, slapped the fuck Bruce out of him. Bitch slapped. Him. Okay. Um, yeah, where's, where's the, the bottle? bottle? It's, it's, Give me the it's bottle. Slowly going away. Um, Cindy's been drinking. On it. to comics that I'm actually enjoying now. Oh. Justice League is good. Okay, when did Lex Luthor, like, what did I miss? When did he become a bad guy again? He became a bad guy at the end of No Justice. Okay. Because um, I read. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was like, is it- That's the pile I need to put away. All of that I need to put away. My reading pile is upstairs on the dining room counter, much to my wife's chagrin. I used Why are to all your comic things, but then my wife told me I needed to buy a comic book store. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> not here. But no, no. Uh, the Justice League is actually is is good. Mm-hmm. Um, the storyline so far has continued off of No Justice, right? Um, and it's it's been a, it's been an entertaining read. Well, it's because Scott Snyder is a great writer. Yes, I would agree with that. You know, I've... well, it's like I like that. He makes stories not issue by issue. He has a plan for all of his stories. Mm-hmm. 
And when he realizes it, he plans it out so meticulously so that you know what you're going to get issue by issue. Well, yeah. I mean, works. metal was set up from Batman number one in the new right, 52. Yes. Like, and yeah. we're talking five years worth of comics, like, working towards that particular... He was introducing things kind of bit by bit. And even, like, subtleties, like, you, you, you like he, he started talking about the nth metal. Yeah. And then that's what was bringing the owls back, wasn't it? If I'm not mistaken, it was the nth metal? I think it was nth, nth metal or the, the Dionysium. So, or the, it, was, one of those. it was one of the men- metals that was introduced in that Batman. Right. Run. And then it just kind of yeah. it just kind of built and built and built. See, like I love reading Scott Snyder books because everything with him is almost like a Chekhov's gun. It's just kind of like, okay, you hear that? That's okay. That's a trigger word. How many years before we start seeing that in comic mm-hmm. books? Yeah. Because you know, you know that with him, the gears are always turning. All right. You got to bring the mic like clo- see, see what close. Close, like, close, close. Like yeah, that means it's quiet. Quiet. How about now? Better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, much better. It, it, like you got to hold it like it's a cock right in your face. So, I mean, sure, if that's the analogy we want to go with. All right. <laughs> that's... Like you really yeah. like it. There you go. All right. <laughs> yeah, we getting dirty up in here. Um, well, I mean, it is late at night. It's yeah. Dwight's after dark. Dwight's after Dwight's dark. After dark. Um, See, that ought to be the podcast you guys do. <laughs> Like you spend a hundred bucks and get yourself a server, you got yourself a podcast. Dwight's after dark. Dwight's after dark. Dwight's the after things dark. We can talk about. Oh, oh yeah, God. release it on Wednesday, like on Tuesday night, so you can speculate about the the comics coming out on Wednesday. But no, uh, well, no, well, speaking perfect. on that though, um, for those of you who haven't started following us on Facebook, we do do a Tuesday um, live video of the things we're most excited about. Um, Chad, Chad is the most entertaining part of that um, because we don't know whether he's actually going to speak or fall asleep. Um, you know, John and Sarah and I are all excited about whatever we're excited about, and then we turn it over to Chad, and he's like, well, yeah. Um, are there sharks or horror? Uh, yeah. Fuck it. I don't know. You remember that I like sharks. <laughs> No, I just... I get he likes with, me. He really, really <laughs> likes me. <laughs> no, it's just... What happens is I get way too excited and I lock up to where I'm just like Garth in that scene from Wayne's World where he's just like... Eh. <laughs> oh, pop culture reference. There we go. But this is why we had him drink tonight. Right. Because there's so, none of those pauses. So he pauses. can open up and talk. We want... We want uh, Vocal Chad and not non-vocal Chad. <laughs> As he pounds the last yes. of a. I'm keeping count of how many times you do this. That was That's two. <laughs> but anyway, um, what dude, else if you like fru fru tasting shit, you should try a taste of this cold cock right here. And that was not an analogy, people. It, it is really not. is a liquor bottle. Oh yeah, that says cold cock. Trust me, we <laughs> we've spoken many many times about the cold cock up in here. I don't think I'd like it. <laughs> it's oh, a uh s- come on chad you would like the cold cock it's a it's a uh <laughs> only warm cocks here thank you very much oh oh you'll feel warm but it's a uh it's a uh it's a spiced whiskey that was made by uh carrie king from slayer so it's metal i can get down on that try it go for it oh, Let's do facebook this. live the shit or, <laughs> oh, oh, Insta story. Break, someone, give me your phone. Don't do anything. Uh, before you start drinking. <laughs> of course we're going to touch your phone. <laughs> You're the one that there's does a the plethora. There's a plethora of years ago. Derpity derp derp. What did that matter? You're drinking liquor. That's right. Oh, wow. What did you get? Oh. Pour more. It's not even a shot. Come on. <laughs> uh, that, you got to go the other way with that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're Are we live? yet. Right. <laughs> We're not live. We need to be live. That's all right, all right. So here, here is Chad drinking the cold cock. How do you feel? Fantastic. He <laughs> loves... <laughs> this is Chad, and he loves the cock. Right, Chad's <laughs> loving the cock. <laughs> Yeah, that shit's nasty as all get out. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad that I like it? Dude, you can drink the rest of it. I don't care. That shit's been sitting on the table for like four months. Nobody's drinking. <laughs> How, y- you liked it. How many drinks have you had? 
Well, next to strawberry kiwi, yeah, that was a apple really juice. Good. Yeah. That was a really. Good one. It's the what's the alcohol content? Eight percent on this. It's what? Yeah. Eight percent. But it's Chad. No, that's yeah. true. That's so we got to give him a hard time he, about he's it. He's a lightweight, so yeah. Hey man, look, I like what I like. <laughs> <laughs> if it tastes like shit, I ain't gonna drink it. Is... Okay. Um, Just don't pee on the floor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Look, okay. look, look. I already have a cereal pisser that's sleeping upstairs. We don't need any more piss in my house. Okay, here. If you need to piss, there's a bathroom upstairs. You can open up the door in the back and piss in the in the stairwell back there on the outside of the house. That's fine. Not on the floor. I invited all of my staff over going to, to my house this. to to a party and you know to christen my bar. And we have it down in the basement, and there's a bathroom down in the basement. And, and the toilet some, leaks. At some point, <laughs> Chad went to the bathroom, and we came. Um, you Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we still doing phrasing? Yeah, okay. yeah phrasing. phrasing. Jesus. Sometime after Chad left the bathroom, someone else went in and noticed that the floor was wet. And so... <laughs> Look, we, man, when I drink, I sit down, so I solved <laughs> that problem real quick. Okay, that was TMI. Um, All because you sit down doesn't mean that you have to forget about this thing called aiming, okay? <laughs> right, if you don't hear a splash, yeah, you're right. fucking up. You're, you're hitting my walls, and that's not yeah. cool either. That's not cool. There's no snow on the inside of his house. You can't be writing your name, okay? <laughs> he tried to blame it on the dog, and, you know, my dog was like, what? Wasn't me. Wasn't me. When did I blame it on the dog? You, well, at first it was like, you know, your floor leaks, and then it was like, <laughs> well, maybe the dog. And No, he always blames the toilet. Oh, that's right. He said the toilet leak. So now when we drink, he goes all the way upstairs to use our upstairs toilet. And, so and, and he there, doesn't. There's, there's carpeting there, so who knows what? Oh, it is. dude, there's nothing worse than carpeting in a bathroom. <laughs> it's like carpeting in your kitchen. Why would you do that? What '70s great idea was that <laughs> to put carpeting in a bathroom or in a kitchen? Oh gosh, I feel like John McClane whenever I go in there because I make fists with my toes. <laughs> <laughs> you walk out, your toes are smelling like piss. <laughs> wow, that is relaxing <laughs> and stinky. Yeah. Lessons, don't ever invite your employees over to your house. They will fuck shit Lessons. up. <laughs> don't ever let your boss think that you pissed on their floor. <laughs> well, dude, I remember the one and only time, like when I was working at the record store, the one and only time I was ever invited up to my boss's house for a party was for a New Year's Eve. And I got fucking wasted to the point where like, I was blackout drunk. And I don't get blackout drunk. That's just not my scene. But I got blackout drunk. And apparently the next morning, like, they told me, oh, yeah, well, we had to pick you up because you were in the other room, like, you were in the back area of the basement, the unfinished part, throwing up into a basket that had my son's toys in it. (laughs) And then you climbed in, they had, like, some dude that lived with them, like, his name was Andy, and he lived with them for years. And, like, apparently his girlfriend was already passed out laying in bed. Well, I crawled into bed with her. And they're like, uh, what are you doing? (laughs) And, then like, I woke up and Andy's next to me. I'm like, what did we do? (laughs) You know? So, yeah, I, dude, I get it. And that was the last time I was ever invited up to a party. And coincidentally, the kid whose toys I puked up, puked into, lives just right around the street now. (laughs) He just, he bought a house just right around the corner from us. Sorry, Kyle. (laughs) I told him that one of these days he'll have to come over here, get really wasted, and throw up in my kids' toys just to make it even. <laughs> what were we talking about before we started? Uh, you were bitching about Batman. Oh, I was bitching about Batman. Oh, no, I... I and and Catwoman. Catwoman. Oh, and, yeah, and we were Catwoman. talking about what you do like now. Yeah, all right, all right. We're oh, yes, yes. What I do like now. I like Justice League. Um, what am I reading? Oh, Wildstorm is actually good. Has it been uh, good? Garth Ennis is, uh, is writing it, and it's, it's actually very good. Um... You know what's been really consistently good has been the uh, the Green Arrow se- series. I'm behind on that one. Green Arrow's been actually I've been, pretty I've been liking solid. it since the beginning. It's yeah. been very good. Yeah, I, I, I got up to about um, 19. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I, I, I well, they need to move on from this whole Ninth Ring thing, though. I'm kind of tired of reading about the Ninth Ring already. As I am as well, which I, I was just like, all right, it's kind of like Green Arrow's... Court, court of Owls, of owls. Yes, but I was, court of but owls. it works for him though. Yeah. It, you know, they kind of made it his own. 
I loved the art on it. Juan Faria yeah. and Otto Schmidt did awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben and Percy really kind of redeemed himself because did you read Green Arrow in like the New Fifty Two? Like towards I did the end? not. No. Ben Percy had this brilliant idea to have werewolves in Seattle. Why not? And it makes sense. He it's had cool. one. Of, he had one of the werewolves bite. Green Arrow, so Green Arrow was becoming a werewolf, so then they had to travel to, like, South Africa to find some doctor that had miracle blood. Oh, God. And I was like, yeah. what is going on here? What peyote are you smoking? <laughs> what is this? Well, if they went to, to find, like, magic blood, they were obviously doing ayahuasca. <laughs> so, but yeah, I've really enjoyed the, the Green Arrow run. I like what Ooh, they've done with uh, Emmy. As yeah. being the new sister, kind of modeled a little bit after I, I kind of after the uh, Arrow show, yeah, where they yeah, a little uh, bit after Thea, a little yeah, bit. a little yeah. bit after Thea, which I've enjoyed, and and Black Canary and his relationship rebuilding has been really good. Um, oh, yeah. I've dug it. It's been it's pretty well, solid. I mean, series. I, I I just it's just one of those titles that I need to catch up on. Oh, and um, Grell, Mike Grell was doing all the variants as well. Yeah, that's right, he was. Yeah, and we we uh, it's a very a lot of those at Dwight's comics. Yes. <laughs> Come on and pick those up. Um, actually, the uh, the Bendis Superman has not sucked. I am really? surprised. It's um, it picks up uh, right after the uh, <laughs> Sarah's giving me a disproving look. You were, but you said it sucked. No, I said it didn't suck. But you said it. Sucked. No, previous yeah. conversations, you said it sucked. There was an issue of it to suck, but overall, they've, they've done like three issues. They've well, done a thousand so and a thousand one. I liked Man of Steel, and I, tw- I did. I, oh, I feel oh. like there's conver- yes. <laughs> It's the booze. There's been conversations where you have Oh, my said God. You don't Dwight like is it. heading into Rick James territory. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't smash my feet all over his couch. Why did I do what something like that? About? Chad, you better lean yeah, away. He might ask you what all f- over his couch. <laughs> Chad, you might want to lean away. He might ask you what the five fingers say to the face. <laughs> <laughs> Unity. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> but no, um, overall, I guess I mean to say, Superman has not been bad. There's okay. been a, there's been a few missteps, but um, overall, well, of, of the three issues that have been out, uh, it's it's a good series. Well, Bendis is getting his sea legs. I mean, yeah, he's playing I in mean, a new you know. toy box for the first time in how many years? Twenty years? And twenty five um, years? He uh, he just, just came out with years. a new series, Pearl. Uh, yeah, I was well, interested uh, about that. Which is uh, what is it? It's from him, and I believe, is it Michael Gatos or Alex Maleev? Gatos, Gatos yeah, because uh, guys who created Jessica Jones. Yeah, I believe the concept is Pearl is a yakuza tattoo artist who gets thrown into some kind of yakuza gang war, like civil war. And this is like, is this a Vertigo book or is this a DC? No, this proper? is actually. DC, oh, so it's yeah. the it's the third thing that they've got. DC going now. actually gave Bendis his own imprint, really called Jinx World, okay. which because uh, he took the rights to Scarlet, which he had previously produced with, uh, I believe it was Icon with Marvel. Yeah, that was Icon. Yeah, so now they're doing like new printings and they're doing like a new Scarlet story. And uh, uh, what was it? Uh, the United States of Murder Inc. or something like that that he wrote. The United States of America versus Murder Inc. Yeah, versus yeah. Murder Inc. Yeah, that's coming out. Yeah. Um, they're 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 going. They're like, hey Bendis, here's a blank check. Do whatever you want with it. And he's like, well, let me dust off some of these old stories that I, you know. He's like, spit on them before. if you need to. We don't care. Oh yeah. yeah, you know. I think at this point too, it's it's for him. He's just kind of like, yeah, I get to work at DC, but at the same time, I've made my name. I've made my career. I can just really do whatever I want. No one can care. Hell, he put, give me the monies. He put Nuclear Man in Superman. From Superman, Superman 4. Superman 4, really? Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, on a dare. Someone really? someone asked him on Twitter. They're like, what are you going to do? Are you going to put Nuclear Man in it? He's just like, well, now that you said it, yeah, I will. He's like, now that you said it, fuck you. I'm yeah. going to do it. I'm pretty sure it's like if you just tweet at Brian Michael Bendis and you're like, hey, I want this obscure character in it. He'll be like, all right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Where's Otis, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otis Berg. Otis wow. But... Um, no, I think that's all I've been reading right now that I'm actually current on. Mm-hmm. I'm behind on so much stuff, and you know, and one of the great things about um, the people that come into the stores that they'll all recommend uh, titles to me, and and I will, you know, add not them read to the them. Pile. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, I will try, and um, one day, once once um, once you sell the store and retire, 
<laughs> well, I was going to say once we get through the move, I was going to um, start reading, but you know, Sarah was looking at me right then, like, "No, that's not going to happen." See, it's funny. My father-in-law, when he retired, he's like, "I'm going to watch one movie and read one comic book a day." He's been retired for three years now and hasn't hit. Hasn't that. done that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the running joke is Dwight and I both look at each other like, "We're going to catch up. We have time." <laughs> that's right. We nope. have. Nope. No. <laughs> that's funny. But um, yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting stuff out there oh mm-hmm. oh one thing i am reading i am liking is the new tony stark iron man okay um that's actually uh that has been consistently good for all three issues that it has been out <laughs> um so obviously it's going to go off the rails in the next issue um just because you've mentioned that just you because i've it. mentioned that i like it now i will start hate reading that one um but but no um and and i'm excited for the fantastic four because i am an old fantastic four lover so um I'm, I'm hoping. It almost sounded like begin- derogatory. Man, you're, you, you, you're a Fantastic Four lover, ain't yeah, you? you? You wanted them Fantastic Four lovers, didn't you? <laughs> As I reach for my li- liquor. Yes, yes. I swear I heard you say lube. <laughs> From baloney to lube, Dwight's comics got it all. There you go. Boy, this is like some conversation we're having. Yeah. Welcome to Pop Goulash, bitches. So, Chad, what have you been up reading? Uh, I've been reading Venom, and I kind of don't like where it's going. Uh, just because... <laughs> Would you elaborate on that, please? Because, <laughs> well, well, like now any, that you asked... It, for whatever reason, they wrote, like, uh, what's his name that's going to play him in the movie? He's in the book now, and it's kind of meta, but it's stupid. <laughs> I just, I don't know where they're, where the fuck that they're heading, because... It's like, okay, the god of the symbiotes, they take a whole issue to introduce him. Cool, whatever. But now they're he just sweeps up Miles Morales and just flies off to the planet of the symbiotes. I don't <laughs> words, Chad. This is, okay, this is what, this, this is what happened. Does to me. This is what happened. Chad, like, there's a sweet medium, and Chad was just like rocket fuel to the top and over, and now yeah. words. Words. No. It's just <laughs> Let's give him some gold that's just, cock. that's just what that issue did to me. It just it makes me speechless because I don't like where it's going. But um tell you what I kinda like right now is the big trouble in little China line really? uh, that they're going on right now. Porque? <laughs> yeah, all right. Big surprise. Um yeah, because I got the old man Jack series going on right now. And at first I hated it, but I kinda like it now. So you started off hate reading it, and now you kind of have a romantic relationship with it, and it's kind of soft and sweet. I know, you know, it's. <laughs> Next, Jack Burton's dead now. Spoilers, but um, it's got like what one issue left, and I don't know what's gonna happen next. So, I'm just a big Big Trouble in Little China fan. So. Okay. I just watched that recently. It was on demand, and I was like... For the first time? No, 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 oh, no, Oh, okay, no. cool. Dude. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> he was about to get, like, honestly mad at me. <laughs> not not mad, but I'm like, like, dude, I was I watched that when you were in diapers, man. <laughs> I was in diapers probably when I saw that, but... Cool. <laughs> that explains a whole lot. I mean... And that was just last week. Bum bum. Look. <laughs> Ouch. But um, but I mean, like, look. I claim that Jaws is the first movie I ever saw, but Big Trouble in Little China is close second. Um, but yeah, no. I'm just I'm just a very big Big Trouble in Little China and John Carpenter fan, and it just it hits that sweet spot with me. Word. Plus Kurt Russell. Right on. Anything else, or is that it? I'm trying to get into Death or Glory. Okay. Um, I've only got through issue one right now, but so far it seems pretty good. What is the premise? Uh, this girl has a souped-up car, and she's robbing from some seemingly um, unlinked people, but uh, she has a plan. I don't really know that plan yet. Ah. Big plans. Big got, plans. 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 Big, big plans. We got big plans, really big plans. So again, going back to Chad peeing on my floor. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's so pissed so off about this floor. 
Rewind the clock. Rewind that. It's been so, a few months now. I'm just like Jesus. When um, I had a few at that at that particular night, and but I, you didn't piss on your own I floor. I didn't piss on my own floor. I'm at least have that much presence of mind. I'm gonna come into the store next week. I'm gonna be like, "What's up, floor pisser? <laughs> Get out." <laughs> Suppose Come into Dwight's Comics and use the code word floor pisser, <laughs> and you'll get a lion cat. You'll get a lion cat. <laughs> but I, I can just see somebody coming in. I'm like, um, what's up, Dwight? You got my books? All right, cool. Thank you. Oh, 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 wait, floor pisser. <laughs> As I jump down from the ceiling, <laughs> that will be Dwight's Comics. Hail Hydra, <laughs> floor pisser. <laughs> You'll say goodbye after you buy your books. You'll reach in really close, ear to ear, floor pisser, and just walk away. <laughs> wow. wow. But I had I had told them all after I'd had a few drinks that I had plans. I got big, big plans for the store. Mm-hmm. And I obviously didn't elaborate on that. And so the next day, people were asking me about these big plans, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And uh, supposedly, whatever I've had a few to drink, I mentioned these big plans. And so, uh, and then afterwards, you tried to call an ex employee as yeah. we all well, stopped yeah. being drunk and were like diving for your phone. Like, no, it's yeah. like calling an ex girlfriend. Yeah, it's like calling an ex girlfriend. You know, all is forgiven. Please come back at 2 a.m. <laughs> like, but no. Um, so, yeah, I do have big plans, but only the liquor will, will know for sure. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm chugging more vodka. Maybe I'll before the end of this podcast, I'll tell you all what the big plans are. I got big, some big Seven plan. Up, but I might be flat. If you want some seven, flat Seven Up to mix with that, why? Straight to the bottom. Fair enough. Go, just, go. just trying to make, just cutting out the middleman. Fair enough. My wife just, keeps grabbing a bottle away from me. Like every uh, time I see somebody drinking straight vodka, I think of that scene in Cheech and Chong still smoking when, like, after they get arrested. For <laughs> they're smoking this massive joint, and she just like, "Hey man, we're gonna go three miles an hour, so we don't seem suspicious." And then like they just they're just stopped. They're not going anywhere. And a cop pulls over, and like they roll down the windows, and smoke just pours out of the car. And he's like, "Hey man," uh, the cop's like, "Can I see your license, please?" Oh, it's on the back of the car. <laughs> and then like finally they get arrested. They go to jail, and they go in front of the judge. And Tommy Chong goes up. He's like, like he's tripping because he ate all of these drugs in the car, and he's still like wigging out. He goes up. He's like, I need water, man. And he drinks like the he grabs the judge's water cup. He drinks it. And he's like, and he spits it out. He's like, that's fucking vodka, man. <laughs> if you haven't seen Cheech and Chong still still smoking, probably one of the greatest stoner comedies of all time. We were having a discussion in the store the other day about greatest movies and greatest genres. Oh, yes. And um, oh, the greatest. Are, are we bringing this up? Yes, now? we are. We're, hold we're, on, hold we're on. Doing this now. Look, I'm, I'm gonna go grab to go another to battle, beer. All right, we're doing this. So I'm ready. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so we had decided that um, the first genre was the greatest soundtrack of all time, and I said obviously that was Purple Rain. That's where you're going with it? I thought you were talking about westerns. Well, now. we'll get there. We'll oh, get there. Right, wait, wait. Right, right, right. So you said based off of soundtracks? Well, no. The first genre we decided was, you know, we were we were talking about movies, and they said, what's the greatest soundtrack of all time? And I said, well, it's Purple Rain. Not or scores. The, or the single soundtrack, which came out in 92. Or you could even go as far as to say the uh, Batman 89 soundtrack, which was that is done by Prince. That is immediately what me and Chad brought up was Batman was awesome. Or Batman. the score... The score done by Danny Elfman. That's right. Mm. And then Dwight was just like, no, pr- you know, Purple Rain. Purple Rain, Purple Rain. forever. I'll stand on that bridge with you, though. Yeah. So then we, we kind of were coming up with more stuff. And we're but you got to also, you gotta also figure, too, uh, Purple Rain was out before these two were even born. Oh, that's true. That's true. Ooh. Children. 80, oh, 83, 84, right? Yeah. yeah. Chad, yeah. when were you born? 92, but most oh, of the Jesus things I Christ. consume are God. way before I was born. 92. 92. Everything I'm about is 80s. I, I, I was a like freshman I, in high school, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I said that on the last episode, too, but like. And I think I probably said I was a freshman in high school, bitch. Probably. <laughs> Damn, I had been through a one wife and moving on to the second by then. Good lord. So, <laughs> Good so lord. it mostly came down to us 
voting like, okay, whose Prince album was better? Well, Purple Rain. <laughs> Uh, sign of the times. Well, uh, no, as far as soundtracks go. Oh, as far as soundtracks, yeah, as far as soundtracks. Dude, Under the Cherry Moon was a good one. I mean, which Under was the Cherry uh, Moon was good. Rekastol. Where you go? Where you go? You go with But look, <laughs> you fucked her mother. Only one of them had scandalous. Oh, the oh my was the god! Batman he did not soundtrack. just do that. He did. <laughs> Dude, I've got the scandalous sex suite, Ooh. which is the EP. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. Extended version. It I was gonna say, really, out of oh, baby, all baby. of the songs in the Batman soundtrack, "Scandalous" was your number one. Like, come on, Party Man, Party Man, Party Lawrence? Man, Lawrence, <laughs> dude, let's broaden our minds. <laughs> how about the how about the B side of Two Hundred Balloons," <laughs> which was the B side of the Bat Dance single? Yes, you're talking to a former record store guy. Yeah, that's that's right. true. That's true. Former record store. But then, of course, um, we started bringing up other soundtracks to kind of dissuade Dwight. Mm. We were, we, you know, like we were kind of arguing, like, okay, do Disney movies count? You know, just do musicals count? And as soon as we got on the topic of musicals, I remembered that you know one of the greatest musical movies of all time was Drumroll, please, oh, <laughs> Grease. That's right, Grease. Grease. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then my soon-to-be ex-employee went, "Wait, I hate that movie." I yeah, fucking fuck that movie. hate that movie. Thank you. Wait, wait, what? Wait, oh, what? I hate Grease, dude. I oh my hate it. God. If I'm going to go musical movie, Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, okay, all right. But still, Grease. Grease or, or, or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, we completely forgot about that. We really did. Damn. There's Which a was a musical. It was. It was. A musical. Yeah. But before we came here, after we had dinner, we actually stopped at Best Buy. <laughs> we, bought, we forced we Chad to buy the Blu-ray commemorative <laughs> edition of Grease. Uh, and dude, as, as we're moving on Sunday, did, we're did going you, to be playing that. Did you get a gift receipt? You can return it. <laughs> oh, no. I, I threatened one better. I was like, all right, you know that Jimi Hendrix concert where he lights his guitar on fire and does the fucking hands? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do on top of Grease. <laughs> The thing is, no. the sad part is, he can't return it because when the guy handed him the receipt, Chad just went, nah, and he walked out. <laughs> it's in the system. It's, like I said, mine's better. It's automatic. It makes me feel good. Hydromatic. Um, <laughs> dude, I'm sorry, but the one song is just way too rapey. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, it just, I just, you know what it is? When I was in freshman no ju sophomore going into my junior year of high school i took a national trip with the student council that i was on and i got stuck in a bus with a three to one ratio girl to guy and these women watched grease three times in a row oh and sang along oh. every fucking <laughs> time <laughs> and not just like ah, la, 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 like Grease, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> i don't even know the songs i was just like kill me i was like i felt like i felt like adam sandler and the wedding singer fucking kill me <laughs> yeah no i just and if my dana my former uh, co-host on the show she just texted me like a week or two ago hey we're all going up to mchenry to go see it on like the the drive-in i'm like hard pass <laughs> like wow yeah i would rather like i may 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 <laughs> see a stage production of it because that's different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even the script and the songs are different. Right. But I just, I can't, I can't do the movie. Oh, like, man. I would much rather, like, poke out my eardrums with, like, dull spoons, <laughs> like grapefruit spoons, <laughs> than to have to listen to that tripe. Oh, I my God. I fucking hate grease. <laughs> like, to the point where, like, I throw away bacon grease immediately. <laughs> I don't even save that shit. Any grease, really? Like they tried having the the Blu-ray touch me. I was like, oh, I feel greasy now. Yeah, right. I feel dirty buying this. I, I'm 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 disappointed. The best part of the whole movie is the cartoon at the beginning. After oh, that, yeah. it was all downhill. 
Hey, at least we didn't make you buy Grease too. Yeah. At least that had Michelle Pfeiffer in it. Damn straight, and she all she needs is a cool writer. <laughs> but <laughs> oh yeah, you like Grease too, though, didn't you? I like it better than the first one. I'll, I know that much. Dude, didn't they get on a motorcycle and fly away at the end of that? Oh, probably. Like in Greece, they got in the car they and the flew car away. Flew away, yeah. The fuck is that all about? Well, you know, it's... I can tolerate Michelle Pfeiffer more than I can tolerate Olivia Newton-John. Mm-hmm. She was hopelessly devoted to you. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I like Michelle Pfeiffer a lot more. She was Catwoman. Well, okay, she was, she was, and okay. she was also uh, Janet Van Dyne too. Yes, which was uh, excellent, excellent. I still which, haven't seen that one. Oh, you Dude. did see Ant Man, man. I trust yeah. me, I want to, no. but I haven't yet. Dude, um, what else did we see? The reason? Oh, we saw Mission Impossible. Oh my God, that movie was excellent. Okay, what do you think about them talking about getting uh, um, oh, fucking white guys, uh, Tom Cruise as Green Lantern? I was just mentioning that today. I just read about it today. I'm like, why can't we just put Idris Elba in as Jon Stewart? Yeah, for real. I am so tired of Hal Jordan. Well, I mean, Jeff Johnson said that he wants it to be like a buddy cop with Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you wouldn't have Kyle Rayner and Guy Gardner in it either, too, but who knows? Uh, From what I understand, the reason why they want Tom Cruise... Because he's a big name. Well, not just because he's a big and he does but his own stunts. The guy that's attached to directing also directed the last two Mission Impossibles. So he's pulling for Cruz just because he's just like, oh, well, I've worked with him. He's great guy. He's got great work ethic and everything. And Scientology. Yes, and Scientology. Scientology. Help and me. Scientology. Help me, Mr. Tom Cruise, with your Scientology <laughs> black magic. How much you want to bet, though, that somewhere in that movie it's going to have him running away from something? Oh, yeah, Very he has bad. to run in every Very movie. Bad. Very, very fast. I can't remember where some college actually did a scientific study and they found out that the more Tom Cruise runs in a movie, the better it does at the box office really? with critics. I've actually heard that this last uh, Mission Impossible movie is like the best in the series, I, I, which yeah, is I, tough because it's what, six? Yes. Number yeah, six, six in the series? Yeah, sixth one. And yeah, well, I mean, they really didn't kind of like find their groove until four. Like, right. I mean, the third one had Philip Seymour Hoffman, but the fourth one was really where we, people just kind of went... Oh wow! This is a this is actually a serious and good franchise. Yeah. We I can mean, uh, Angela Bassett. My gosh, um, yeah. yeah, you can't go wrong with. The... I mean, I feel like they definitely took the serious turn with the third one. Um, Wait, that's the one with the Metallica song, or is that the no, one no, no, with no, the Limp Biscuit that, song? That's Mission Impossible Two. Okay, that's the one we don't talk about. the the John the John Woo one. How is a John Woo movie bad? It's just bad, man. Like, uh, <laughs> it's just bad, man. Uh, the action had to at least have been good. The action's good, but some parts are just like really pointless. Like they oh. jump off of motorcycles and then they tackle each other in the air. And Dude, that's slow motion. motion. And there's, but that sounds awesome. But there's always, that's, that's there's always a joke. Always Dude, if you've seen The Killer or Hard Boiled, there oh, are yeah. like a bajillion doves in every scene of those yeah. movies. But I feel like number three is when they finally cut back to the more serious tone of Mission Impossible. But it's it? Simon Pegg. So Look, Simon but, Pegg does like he's good in that movie, but wasn't Jack Black in the first one? I don't think no. so. Or there was some he was in one of them, I want to say. Mm-hmm. As like a, a tech guy. He wasn't like corny comedy. I, uh, what no, movie was no, he in? Not at all. Amelia no, Hark? I'm sorry, he was in uh, True Lies. True Lies. Yeah. He yes. was in True Lies. Yeah. Wait, what the <laughs> Where was Jack Black in True Lies? He was like in. He was like one of the the CIA operatives. He was like one of the tech guys that was in the van. I need to rewatch that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like right at the beginning of the movie. Okay, yeah, I really need to rewatch that now. Yeah, you do because it's yeah. an amazing movie. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I was oh, just yeah. watching something on it a few days ago. Arnold, <laughs> do it now. Do it now. <laughs> that reminds me, uh, the last Facebook Live we did, we were doing Arnold's voices. Because <laughs> the Predator book that you chose. Yeah, damn straight, and it's a good book. It's a team of uh, survivors from other Predator comics that just grouped together. And was Batman in it? Because Batman wasn't a Predator That's comic. Right. He wasn't a Predator comic. Okay. And actually, so was Superman and Batman, Batman versus and Superman Predator versus Predator and Alien. 
True. <laughs> but they, they're not on the team. Then your argument is invalid. <laughs> but they take survivors from other uh, Predator books, and then they put them all on a team, and they hunt Predators. Is it still in dark, on Dark Horse? Yeah. Um, Man, that, they're then, not letting that IP go. Oh, God, no. I mean, well, they're doing a good job with it, too, because they have a writer that's been a vet for most of the Predator books that Dark Horse has done. Uh, I think it's like Chris Warner, I want to say his name is. Um, and they have him doing, uh, well, they did Predator Hunters 1, and then Predator Hunters 2 is out now, too. My dog is going ape shit out there. There's got to be like a possum or something out there. If he comes back skunk, the I'm horror be movie sense in me is tingling, and there's probably somebody out there. Not in this neighborhood. Predator, yeah. Well, no, he'd be fine against the Predator because he's not armed. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got a machete in here somewhere. I got my knife. I'm good. <laughs> but <laughs> that's not a knife. That's not no, this that's a knife. Lots of knives. No, I've got a, I got a machete from El Salvador down here somewhere. Ooh, like a straight up like Jason Voorhees machete. You said the keyword. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's like, now you're talking my language. He just gave me like the sarcastic Wonka lean. He's like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> Right. But, um, yeah, no, Predator Hunters 2 is a good book so far. I mean. Is it three issues in? No, it's Because everything issue. seems, it seems like everything is like, well, I'm on the third issue. It's okay. No, it's it's one issue in right now. Um, and it's basically just tying up all the loose ends from the previous book. But so far, it's good. I mean, the last one had him go to the South Pacific hunting down a group of four predators that don't use technology whatsoever. So they're just trapping people and hunting them on this remote island. That sounds boring AF. All right. Wow. If you read it, it's good. <laughs> they're like, look, it's Survivor. <laughs> the boring version with predators that have no lasers to blow your head up. But they go the more brutal route, and they use the wrist blades or their combi sticks. Like So they go Wolverine on them. Or X-23, more likely. There you go. It's good. I highly you suggest You know what? One it. thing that... Bringing up X-23, just to change the subject, because I don't want to talk about Predator anymore. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank in, you. Please change it. <laughs> in, uh, in Logan, did X-23 have the foot blades? They didn't show. Okay. I, I don't recall seeing them. Here's another thought for you. Know. Rash al Ghul and Thanos, the same character, discuss. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to say no, because Rash al Ghul is, well, for the most part, he's human. He just keeps getting reignited when you pits. throw him in the Lazarus pit. Uh, Thanos. Um, Has a bitch bitten. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. He's got a what? He has a bitch mitten. A bitch mitten. <laughs> but their motivations are the same. Everything is too populated. We need to wipe out half the population. Well, I've always known Raish was more of like an eco-terrorist. Right. Where, yeah, he always, like, for the good of the planet, he never really saw it as, like, humanity was, or humanity should live on. He's just kind of like, you know... You know, the planet was here long before us, and we're killing it. But wasn't that wasn't that Thanos's motivation too for the good of the universe? We've got way too many people to sustain. I mean, at least in the movies. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah I, at least I, for the movies. Yeah. Sarah Ooh, shaking yeah. her head. Yeah. Huh. Sarah, you're wrong, Ruben. Shut up. She hits me with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I hear the shaking. <laughs> I hear your bunch of I'm she just pondering it because she just it's hit me. one of those like. Shit. It's one of those moments you don't think about. So now it's like. It's a shower moment thought for me yeah. this morning. I was like, oh man, they're kind of the same character. <laughs> I got shampoo in my eyes. Fuck. I don't know. If they, I wouldn't call them the same character. They kind of have the same motivation, but it differentiates. And it depends on where you're going with it. I'm. I, She's I'm had pulling one a drink. Chad. <laughs> yes, right. I am pulling a Chad. Yes, yes, drink so oh, we can have. Yeah. I think she needs a little bit of the cold, cold cock. cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's to say. I'm getting rid of this bottle tonight, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> Look, it ain't that bad. I mean, it's. Look, it's once you get. <laughs> once you just. Once it passes just the tip, you're fine. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 
This next section brought to you by Goldcock. Whatever you do, just don't spit it out. That's all we ask. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray. And now we just would. Right. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know what? Yay. We're an hour and hour and ten hour and fifteen in. So that for the first weird silence. Right. That, Right. Hey, why not? Going good there. Once again, brought yeah. brought on by me, but that's all right. Yeah. So, John, what about you? What's uh, what's on your pull list? What are you uh, uh, What are you digging? I'm really loving Mr. Miracle. Okay. Uh, have you been reading that at all? I have not. Uh, Tom King, Mitch Gerards, and he's kind of taking like a very kind of interesting approach to Mr. Miracle. How much do you know about the character? <sighs> very little. I know he's okay. uh, like Big Bart is his old lady. Yeah. And she's uh, 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 Than- or, uh, Thanos, Apocalypse's daughter, or not Apocalypse, but uh, she's one of the f- the, fe- the Furies, Furies on Apocalypse. On yeah. Apocalypse, yeah. Uh, so basically, but he's human. Yes. Y- yeah. I mean, he's born on Apocalypse. I don't know if that makes him. He's a new god, but they, for all intents and purposes, okay, so he's one of he the new looks, gods. He, he looks human. Uh, and basically, Mister Miracle. If you go all the way back, he's like an escape artist. Okay. That's like his superpower. He can escape anything. And in the that's first, not a superpower. Yeah. <laughs> and in the first issue, uh, Tom King's decides is like, you know what would be cool if Mr. Miracle committed suicide because he wanted to escape death. And everyone's like, oh, that, so that, that one issue miniseries. You're like, wow, this is kind of dark already. We're not even two pages in. All right. DC is what if Mr. Miracle yeah, committed exactly. suicide? And it kind of becomes like this slice of life book where. Like you, Tom King is kind of like hinting at this idea that Mr. Miracle might be dead, but he might be alive. Go. Where is it? Where is it? Upstairs. Where is it yeah, because the one down here, you'll pee on the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you go upstairs. So no, just Don't go on up the, floor, the stairs and then like go towards the, the front door. Okay. And it's the only door on the right. Do he not will piss get lost. on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get lost, go outside. Exactly. God. But so yeah. they, they, they're kind of almost, it sounds like almost kind of a uh, vision, how they did the vision as a, a domestic, bit, yeah. like yeah. A, a domestic story. Yeah, very slice of lifey. Uh, Didn't Tom King write that too? Yes, he did. Oh. Yes, he did. He and w- weirdly, weirdly enough, Vision and Mr. Miracle both have a color scheme of uh, red, green, and yellow. Yeah. So, I mean, hey, why not? Go for it, but I mean, I think it's ten issues in. Yeah, ten issues. Yeah, ten, of, 10 of twelve. Yeah, 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 yeah. ten out of twelve. I'll, I'll catch the I'll catch the trade when it comes it's, out. It's it's very at Dwight's well comics. At Dwight's yeah, comics, exactly. At Dwight's comics. Uh, I'm reading all of the trades of Deadly Class from Image by Rick Remender. Okay. Because uh, I found out that the Russo brothers are actually producing a TV show for Sci-Fi okay. based on it. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'll be one of those you know those cool kids, the hipsters that reads it all beforehand, says I was cool. And I, I'm i in fallen in love with it. It's basically, what if there was a school for kids to train them how to be assassins? And you got like, it takes place in the 80s and you got kids from like the Soviet Union. You got them from the Mexican cartels, from the Yakuza. And you kind of see like the cliques in this high school are the different gangs. Hmm. And it's very kind of interesting and unique. And Rick Remender said it was also very personal for him because he moved around a lot and he felt that he was always kind of the outsider to all the cliques in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing I've ever really read by him was uh, Tokyo Ghost. Love which was Tokyo fantastic. Ghost. Oh, uh, well, just because I see that you have a lot of Sean Murphy mm-hmm. stuff, when I went to go see him at C2E2, I had him sign my trade of Tokyo Ghost. Yeah. And as soon as I plopped it down in front of him, he goes, huh, I just met with my agent. About the movie for that. Really? And I was like, what? And he goes, oh, yeah. He's like, there's a chance that that's going to become a movie. That's dope. And I he's just looked at him and I was like, what? should you be telling me this? And he goes, probably not. <laughs> You've heard it here first on Pop Goulash. Yeah, exactly. But when I met him, I'm like, dude, I love that series. He's like, yeah, Rick's going to do a second series. I'm not on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he told me that as well when I'm I like, had him Well, then I'm sorry, Rick. I'm not reading your fucking book. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I tried to read low. I'm like... Mm. I couldn't even get past like five pages into it. I'm just like, no, I don't. I had one of my customers. He's in love with that. He's really? Like, Yo, Dwight, you've got to read low. And I'm like, eh, mm-hmm. okay. I think I'll I bought the first stack. five issues at half price book for like 50 cents or a dollar a piece. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll pick them up. And I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> file them away. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, if you if you want to read more Rick Remender, also give uh, Chrononauts a shot. He didn't do Chrononauts. That was Mark Miller. 
Was it Mark Miller? Mark, yeah, it was Mark Miller and uh, Sean Murphy. Sean Murphy, yeah. Oh, for, 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 Chrononauts for, was odd, dude. Yeah, Chrononauts the Millar was awesome. world stuff. I'm all about. Like, yeah, like I, I tell these guys, if Miller puts something out, you pull it for me. That's yeah, that's yeah. That you just no. know. Like, are you reading uh, the Magic uh, Magic Order? No, I, I have not. I, but it, I've like, been, oh. I've been hearing good things. About I was about to say, yeah, it looks good. very interesting. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Like, it's a family of magicians, and but it's oh, like really? magic is real. Okay, yeah, it's dope. It's oh, super right. dope. Just That's pretty cool. The latest cover had all these bondage people on it. Yeah, like, she's like the main villainess. And okay. like like one of the things in this issue is like she's like she's got her like her Wong, her her like you know, her second command. Jesus Christ, could you have come in any louder? Like a bull in the chin. Who pees on floors. Right? Yeah. Dude, you didn't piss on my floor, did you? Because that'd be like a lake. I know how big you are. <laughs> You're good. I almost tripped on the stool in there, though. Hey, dude, I got little kids, man. They got to wash their hands. I'm not used to that. You better have washed your hands, too, you filthy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is, the, this is the dad in me coming out. Dude, they, I talked to you this way. Wait till you hear how I talk to my kids. <laughs> Look here, you goddamn it. You better clean your fucking hands. No. I washed my hands. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so like in this issue, like she's like, change your, change into something that'll excite me. I want to fuck, and basically oh, like, like he's a shape he can shape shift or whatever with magic, and he turns into her, and that's that's basically the cover of the oh, magazine. I get you, okay, yeah. So yeah. for magic, the more order. you know. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I walked in and there was like bondage and yeah. But it's it's like Mark Miller is just he's a genius. Like there's nothing that he's written so far that I've been like meh. meh. Like he did one, he did like a tangent comic from the tangent tangent line. Mm. And I I read that and I'm like eh, it was, like it was hard to get into those tangent that tangent line of comics. I mean, they did 12 of them. I've got 6 I think and I'm just like No. Yeah, I think I did like 2 and I was like no, I'm out. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Talk amongst yourself. I'm going to bring this insanity dog in because I think my wife might be sleeping. So. Oh, okay. Okay. fair enough. Touche. Touche. Well, we'll I like how Chad was like, yeah, she's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Not scary at all, Chad. <laughs> Look, as soon as I get up the stairs, I jumped because I saw her like in the chair and she's dead asleep. Like, ah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, cool. The bathroom's just around the corner. As I trip over a stool, getting right in the door. This chat's trying to be quiet. And so he I'm questioning, noise. like, when you use the bathroom at my house, there's a stool by the sink as well. You didn't trip over that stool? I never used the bathroom at your house. He went on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Inaccurate. Inaccurate. Fake news. Fake news. I'm like 90% sure you used the bathroom at my house. <laughs> I stand corrected. I did, but there was no, but there was no stool in there at the time. So, how can you miss it? It's like a giant step stool that you should be using to get like to high shelves because my kid is Batman and he'll jump off of it. But I keep it in front of the sink. What did I just walk into? Bruce Wayne doesn't need no stools. <laughs> he has a grappling hook. He will find his way up there. Please, please I rescue us from swear this. Swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what were you? What? What? It, what's on? Were you done? Yeah, he's done. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, yeah he's done. I was. Thank you, Daddy Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> All right. What's the question? What have you been reading? What's on your pull right. list? What's what's uh, spring in your spring? Sarah's not anything. She's buying a lot of stuff, though. Thank you at Dwight's Comics twenty three zero seven with Sean. We Bird we don't. <laughs> The That's end right. of those receipts are oh. never discussed when we leave. Right. <laughs> Disregard that nice comment. It never happens. She doesn't buy anything. She doesn't buy anything. <laughs> Nothing. She doesn't buy anything. Dude, seriously, if you could just keep the receipts after I shop there, that'd be fine. I can start doing that. Excellent. Just have a little box. <laughs> Good day, sir. Good day, sir. So I caught up on... So Mr. and Mrs. X came out. Huge Rogan Gambit fan. I caught up on their mini series, The Path of Fire, great that sounds like a pokemon title it does it makes me angry but it's like i'm so mad yeah Urgh. i'm just mad it, we all make jokes that chad is the angry white man i'm the angry little person i get mad so fast 
<laughs> I'm angry every day, but I keep it in. I shove that shit down. <laughs> you want to know a secret? I'm always angry. I'm always angry. You're you're angry. Every time I see you in the store, you're always looking like this. <laughs> no one can see me right now, but everyone's just kind of like it's the most mundane face possible. <laughs> Mundane Accurate. face. Accurate. <laughs> is that like a new type of resting bitch face? Is just mundane face. Mundane face. Well, like even at pre even at previous jobs, people have been like, "Is he okay? Like, it looks like he's on his worst day of his life." And it's like, no, that's just how his face is. <laughs> his face. Why is your girlfriend always giving me that look? No, uh, she's not giving you a look. That's just how her face is. <laughs> But really, I'm just internally angry all the time, but I never <laughs> let it come out. Anyway, Sarah was telling us a story. True stories. All right, so I caught up on their miniseries, which was great. So it gave you kind of like a... it. They go on a mission. They send them to like marriage counseling, pretty much. And it goes through their like whole backstory on how they should be together. And then X-Men Gold comes out with the spin where they get married, which is the thing. And then their miniseries starts where it's their wedding, their honeymoon, and... Then she poofs out of nowhere and ends up with Deadpool. So it's it's interesting. Wait, Rogue ends up with Deadpool? At the end. Like, they have this huge, like, thing happen. I thought Deadpool happen. was married to, like, some death. death. They, they, yeah. they, they divorce, though. Oh. They do. And she will. Ho- she holds it against Gambit a lot. She's like, he'll be like, well, you catch Deadpool. She's like, no, correction. I made out with Deadpool over his head all the time. It makes me makes me laugh. Why yeah. would you make out with Deadpool? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, so I'm caught up in that. Domino. Um, Domino. Ooh, ooh, Domino's good. Domino's good. Domino's good. Behi- I'm already too. She's behind in that. That's just like. Oh, I'm caught up on that one, actually. That one's See, that, that one, I'm going to have to catch on Marvel Unlimited because I just can't afford to like buy more books than I'm already buying. Sure you can at Dwight's Comics. Come on by. Come on. Are by. you going to give me a discount for the two, <laughs> two, two episodes I've had promoting your show? <laughs> we can talk. Look, <laughs> I can personally fill you in on Domino. It ain't no big deal. No. No. I, I would have to read it. No. no. Has she ever had a, her own series before? No. no. Or was she always like just a side character? And that kind of stuff, but she's never had her own title. Gotcha. Which is I interesting. Think she did some limited series not too long ago. She did, but everyone compares her to like the Harley Quinn of the Marvel Universe right now. No, she's not. That's Gwen Stacy. Eh, they're, that's the way they're writing her. Oh, is she like a zany haha? Mm-mm. I mean, I'm behind in it. Um, and I finally started reading Saga. I am like so behind. I know. And I picked up like almost all of the trades and I was like, why? Why did I wait so long? When is the next trade coming? Uh, I want to say next month, I okay. think. Yeah. You will find it at Dwight's. Oh, yeah. Is it yes. next month or October? Because October is actually Image's biggest month coming out right okay. now. I. I read previews. No, that no, no I'm not. Top. I'm not like okay. Tell me. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm trying no, to think, but yeah, I think yeah, because like they slipped in a Walking Dead on me a couple months back, and I was oh, like, yeah. wait a minute, when did this fucking Walking Dead trade come out? They do that. It's like Xenoscope. Every so often, you'll see something come in, and you're like, what? Why, Why are there so many boobs in this issue? Speaking on that, Xenoscope oh. has way too many boobs, <laughs> oh. and that, that's coming from a dude who enjoys some boobs. That's a lot of boobs. We. We have. Oh no! Please don't. Your children are telling you. No. <laughs> this is Dwight's After Dark. This is what this Dwight's After Dark is meant to be. And no, See, everybody that works for you. We're saying no. We're cutting it off here. <laughs> See, everybody that works for you is like, no, 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 no. I'm like, bring it, do it. Tell me, tell me the nasty. We have. Wait, did somebody did somebody borrow a comic and go to the bathroom? No, oh, no, 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 no. That doesn't happen at Dwight's comic. But no not necessarily damn library. Well, I'm not no, no, saying, no, no, no. dude. <laughs> no, there is some more. Dwight, uh, Dwight, I'm no not saying the customer. <laughs> no, oh no, 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 none of, no, none of that. Why did the eyes go straight? <laughs> 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 no, 
No, we we um get too much porn. Yeah, we get we get a lot of um the lesbian bondage porn. And they're they're all topless and and, and zombie tramp. Zombie. Well, not worse only than tramp. that. Yeah, there's oh, all the jungle books. No, let jungle me ask books. you this. And, yeah. So. so uh, for those of you out there that are interested in those kinds of books and you're just kind of scared to go yes. up and talk to your local comic book dealer about getting those titles, come on over to Dwight's. We we will talk to you and if we you, can hook you up. We if won't you judge like, you until you, you leave. Oh, no, we're going to judge you, but uh, we'll still sell them to you. If you like eels, uh, yeah, they're, they're good to go. But there, there Is was, there like tentacle porn now? There, there, was, <laughs> no, there, there was there was some that you know, there was a very the artists are definitely smoking some peyote. I, I tell you, I don't. I wouldn't say it's peyote, but uh, there was certainly a very suggestive cover with eels. Yes, it was. A oh, scene. it was a scene. All right, would have been better if it was a lenticular cover. Oh, we, we can bundle these for you if you would yeah, really you, like. Oh, really they like. did the the connecting covers. That's, yeah. yeah. Well, no, it, it's kind of like uh, like it's like one frame at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Like a flip oh. exactly, it's like a flip book. Oh. So if you get all the covers, then everything will be perfect. So you know, there's a we, bell under we, there. We pride ourselves on being a family store, but you know, we do have that little section. Look, if you want back. smut, there's. You want... Uh, do tell me in the in the new store you're gonna have like the beaded curtain. We're room. gonna have the beaded <laughs> curtains. Interesting, yeah. you say that because I made an eighteen and over section in the we, we back. We do have an eighteen and over section too. So come in and ask for. We it. have to discuss your eighteen and over section because some of the stuff you put in there was not eighteen and over, and stuff people were looking for. Yeah. So, come on, now. Look, it doesn't matter if they're looking for it. If it's 18 and over, it's there. <laughs> and we also... Yeah, so we. I don't we, know how that one got there. We have all kinds of stuff here at Dwight's Comics. So, you know, uh, we are we are a family store, but you know, for those of you that like your stuff uh, in a brown paper bag, we can help sure. you out. Just but come don't on send in. it out in a nice purple right. paper bag. Just right. come on in and give us the key. Send it out in a purple press. Just come on in, give us the keyword floor pisser. <laughs> <laughs> floor pisser, and you know, we'll we'll show do you. Do you uh do you have the floor pisser comics? <laughs> I was gonna say I put it in a nice little black bag for you too, so you don't even have to. You can bring it home. No one will notice. No one will ever know. So we were still all right, Chad. What do you want? Uh, let's not use floor pisser. Let's just say saucy section, and we'll saucy know exactly section. what yes, you mean. We do have the saucy section? Do you have the squirter section? <laughs> <laughs> He, I like, I like. Okay, so every time Chad wants to talk, he like holds his hand out and like does the, the does the does the grab hands. But I always think in my head, it's like watching the original Iron Chef, the like the Japanese Iron Chef, where like the commentators are all talking about it, and they've got the one dude on the floor who's like got the inside info, and he's always like, Maruku-san, and they ignore the fuck out of him, and then they finally are like, Yes, John, and he's like, oh, He is using garlic. They're like, we know. <laughs> I used it, to love Iron Chef. Oh, man, it was so uh, good. The so dude comes out and he eats the like the onion <laughs> at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The best is they made a board game about it. Did they I really? Saw, I found it in a Goodwill in like Podunk, Wisconsin, and it was like, this is a board game. $5. I bought it. Oh, hell yeah. Just because. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Iron Chef. So, again, what is on your pull list? Pull list I mean, what else were we reading? Uh, Batman. Yeah. Eh. Eh. I have to get started on Batman again. No. If you guys are going to C2, or you guys are going to Wizard next week, and if Tom King is there, look out, Tom. They're coming yeah, I, for you. That's right. I, I, I will throw a shoe at you. Was it also Justice League, which was already talked about? Um, oh, I picked up Black Badge. The Inner Scout in me is very happy. I saw the picture on, on Facebook. Yes. So. I don't know the backstory or whatever it all is. It's kids, Boy Scouts get lost in the woods. And like I worked for the scouting district, whatever, for like 10 years as a shooting sports instructor. Yes. NRA certified, archery level one certified kind of deal. Don't fuck with Sarah Rubin at all. You will well, we die that tired. A long time ago. So. But yeah, it, it makes me happy because they sent us a book with a badge on it. I'm like, yes, I need this in my life. Is good, um, which then led me to watch Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Okay, such it's a f hysterical movie. Okay, it makes my inner scout very happy. <laughs> um, and then I have a goal of watching all of the Justice League animated series mm -hmm. and the Justice League Unlimited. 
in like a and straight see, unfortunately, shot. Unfortunately, I had never seen them before, so I'm always trying to watch one. But then there's a customer that'll come in and <laughs> want to talk to me, and so now I got to rewind it to see what I missed. Yeah, well, unfortunately, you haven't watched Point Break either. Nobody needs to watch Point Break. Hey, so <laughs> wait I, a minute. I sub- I, I Neither a, version of Point Break. I found a meme that says if you've seen Point Blank, Point Break. Point Blank. Point Break. You've also seen. Gross Point Blank? No. That movie was that, terrible, that too. That movie was terrible, too. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but if you've seen Point Break, you've also seen Fast and the Furious because they're basically the same movie. Um, so angry. <laughs> it did get not... warm down here. Did you feel that? It's like. <laughs> yes, I... <laughs> I should be the human. It's turning torch. into Johnny Storm, man. <laughs> and how many, how many, how many human torches are there in the Marvel universe? There, it's like the thirty-five. There's two. Okay. There's only two. Like, Johnny what Storm is, and the android. Like what? What? what uh-oh. Which android? From the 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 invaders. Oh, John Hammond. John Hammond. Yeah, yes. John Hammond, the original human the torch. Original human torch. From the what 40s. are the odds to have the two like? crazy shit happened to you. Yeah. I mean, how many times can you get hit with the speed force? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. good point. Oh. How many how many times can we watch a movie with uh, some rich kids' parents getting shot in an alley? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking <laughs> time. Every fucking time. <laughs> I will watch Ben Affleck do it. I will watch George Clooney do it. I don't care. If you if you put the bat suit on Pee Wee Herman, I'm watching that movie. <laughs> well, actually, I think hey, I want to see that returns. too. <laughs> <laughs> How funny would that be, though? Just to see Pee Wee Herman in the Batman suit fighting the Joker. Joker cracks a joke. I know you are, but what am I? Oh my god, that'd be great. <laughs> god, do I hate you, Batman? <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> well, no, like, okay, so so dream casting. Who who would be the perfect Joker to Pee Wee Herman's Batman? Pee Wee Herman's Batman. Ooh. Oh my god! Oh. I just have the perfect Joker. Period. Jared Leto. See, part of me thinks like, if Pee Wee Herman is your Batman, you have to get like a super serious actor no. just to counteract it, or Liam a super Neeson. serious. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Liam Neeson. <laughs> But for some weird reason, the first person that popped in my head was Ian McKellen. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Day Lewis. Ooh, there you go. There you go. Because he would have to be a serious Joker. Yes, yes, very serious. But then part of me was just like, or you can just get another comedian. Gallagher. Rip. Or <laughs> that also popped in my head was Gallagher. Or Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor. I. Uh, ooh, Rip no, Taylor. Definitely. Dead. Rip Taylor's definitely dead. He's not dead. He is no, dead. he's not. Oh, wait, no, that's Rip Torn. Yeah, Rip Torn's yeah. dead. What? The, like, could you not have thought of a better name for yourself? Because obviously, nobody named him Rip Torn. No, no. You know, so like, when he's going into like the 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 uh, Screen Actors Guild, and they're like, "All right, sorry, Rip Johnson. There's already another Rip Johnson." Hmm. Rip Torn. <laughs> really, really. Why didn't? Why did? Why did somebody not smack him with a blackjack at that point? <laughs> Eh. There, there's your name. But he was the greatest dodgeball coach that ever lived. Dodge wrench. Yeah, dodge, dodge ball. Dip, right. <laughs> Dip, dive, dodge, duck, and dodge. dodge. <laughs> necessary? You think it's necessary for me to drink my own urine? Uh, not under the circumstances. No, but I'd do it anyway because it's <laughs> sterile and, and I, I like the, the taste. taste. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You can keep him. He's, <laughs> he speaks my language. He's, he's, Dude. I was about to say movie quotes and movie knowledge. That's what we do. <laughs> where, were we, where were we with the uh, movies though? We did. Oh, the greatest western of all time. Greatest western. This one again. A fistful of dollars. No, close. Silverado. I don't know if I've ever seen Silverado. Oh my god. Hey, I just found out today they just added Silverado to Netflix. Is so it? if you haven't so, seen it, you can add it. <laughs> Like how old is Silverado? It was the eighties. Oh, it was. They had Kevin Klein, um, uh, Kevin Danny Costner. Clover, um, so it was the Ian o- Malcolm. Um, Kevin Costner. Yes, Kevin Costner. One of his early roles. Uh, Scott Glenn. Um, oh my gosh! Can you get closer to the mic, Dwight, please? Yes, I can do just that. Or move the stand closer to your face. I can do that this as is well. What, this is what we did last time. I'm like, move closer. <laughs> Like, don't eat it. <laughs> like, no, he, he just wanted some cold 
Oh, God. But no, uh, Silverado, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Westerns of all time. Me and uh, Dwight. No, have I'm the- sorry. It's the second greatest Western of all time. The greatest Western of all time is Blazing Saddles. Well, fight yeah. me. No, I got you. <laughs> I've, I won't argue I've been with that. Fighting you. <laughs> like, no. I'm sorry, but I, I would have to say the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, it's good. A fistful of dollars, a few dollars more. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Tombstone. Tombstone. I'll be your Huckleberry. Dude, Young Guns. Mm. Young Guns 2, not so much. I like Kiefer Sutherland as much as the next guy, but once again, Kurt Russell. Yeah, but Kurt Russell's in a bunch of shit. That mustache. But it's all good. Yeah. Not to mention, yeah, that mustache. <laughs> I mean, mention uh, on top of that, you got Sam Elliott, you got Bill Paxton. Well, yeah, but like, I I love the people who argue. Well, Tombstone is better. No, Wyatt Earp is better. No, Wyatt Earp is not better. Wyatt Earp is trash. Hot trash. No, I'm sorry. Just because Kevin Costner's in it does not make a good movie. Ooh, he's been in good movies, but just putting him in a movie does not make it good. Waterworld. The Postman is not a good movie. I'm 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 listing all of his bad movies. Postman, Waterworld. Um. Man Dances of Steel. Um, Fuck you on Man of Steel. It was a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, but Kevin Costner, no. Well, although the... Um, the Bodyguard? Tin Cup. Hey, hey, that is a damn good movie. The Bodyguard was okay. All right. And speaking, going back to movie soundtracks, come on. Yeah, okay. The Bodyguard? The Bodyguard, all right. Whitney Houston. Um, I saw that in the theater. No Way Out. Now, that one was good. No Way Out was good. Um, hey, Wasn't Steven Seagal in that? No, no, it was, sounds like a Steven Seagal like, movie. No, that was him in Robin Young. No, no, no. Robin Hood? No, 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 no. Robin Hood's Robin was hot. Hood, he's in. He, yeah, oh. that was hot trash. Yeah, um, where he couldn't keep a British accent to save his soul. Right. Yeah. I mean, the Brian Adams song. Right. Right. Brian Adams with Sting and Rod Stewart. Right. But um, no, no Way Out was Sean Young. I'm sorry, not Robin. Sean oh, Young. Sean Young, who showed up at it in full Catwoman. Catwoman, Catwoman yeah, there you yeah. go. And Tim got Burton, kicked off the site. Tim kicked Burton, the please set. hire me. Please hire me. She was nuts. Who's also wanted for burglary right now. Too. Really? Yeah, she broke in somewhere and stole Max from like her previous employer. Really? Yeah. When I know things, I'm like, ooh, 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 let me share. <laughs> He's doing grabby <laughs> hands again. <laughs> it's like, but, I have info, please. It's almost like, put your balls in my hand. <laughs> or like in Parks and Rec with the little girls, like, give me money. <laughs> I just get really excited. I'm like, wait, please, I have things to share. <laughs> we were nice. Kevin Costner bad movies. Yeah. Mm. There's Anything so that wasn't Field of Dreams and, Bat- and Bull Durham. Yeah, Bull Durham was, was probably his. Great. Well, Dances with Wolves was pretty fucking dope. Uh, it was long. It didn't? It was long. Yeah. Didn't he at least get nominated for an Dude, Academy? Dude, he like, I think he won right, right, one. I, I think he won one, one for it, yeah. 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 Dunka. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. that's. Yeah, Dances with Wolves was. a good movie. That was a, that was Although it was form. totally like whitewashed fucking Western. <laughs> yeah. Like the lead Native American was a hot white chick that was raised by Native Americans. So. What are you going to do? Yeah. It was the 90s where subtle racism True. didn't yeah. count. And now we just have overt racism. Right. And Scarlett Johansson, Scarlett Johansson mm. doing all the things. She could do all of the things. <laughs> they're, they're going to. Um, Remake um, the Spike Lee movie with her. Do the right thing. No. I just, I just want to see if anybody paying attention. Oh, <laughs> no, Jesus. Now, if they were remaking She's Gotta Have She's It, gotta that, have I, it. I yeah. would watch that. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> but I remember, too, wasn't we were talking about the greatest comedians of all time? Or, sorry, greatest comedy actors. The greatest comedy actors. Comedy actors. Mm-hmm. Comedy oh, that one's guys. tough. Yeah. Um... Well, it depends because they all have like, like a striking up, up, yeah, up, cl- like rocketed, and then all of a sudden, bullshit. Right. Like, look at Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks was a fantastic comedic actor. Got to like big dramas after that. I stand by my choice as Gene Wilder as the best comic actor ever. Hmm. James Carey. Hmm. The Three Stooges. 
Hmm. Yeah, but which version? I would say the original three. So Molary. No, Shemp actually. That's the that's the misnomer. Shemp was actually the original third stooge. Curly came later. Curly mm-hmm. came after Shemp, and then Curly had a stroke, and Shemp came in after that. I know my Good stooges. Morning. You know your stooges. So. Or sorry, I meant Larry Moe and Curly. Yeah, I just Dude. don't know that little tidbit. Oh of yeah, yeah. Three Stooges knowledge. And if you give me Curly Joe or or, or Joe uh, whatever the fuck his last name was, go fuck yourself. <laughs> those are the wor- those aren't even Three I, Stooges. That's two Stooges and say, two <laughs> lame ass guys that couldn't even get their shit together. I don't even acknowledge. Th- yeah, that, that's even when I just kind of go Three Stooges can't Three Stooges cannon went out the door. Yeah, we only acknowledge Curly or Shemp. That's yeah. It. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. If it's not or fuck you, I'm not watching it. I don't care. I'm suck my dick. I'm not watching it. I mean, Ace Ventura. I'm still on my Jim Carrey thing. Ace Ventura, The Mask, um, Liar Liar. Into the mic, Dwight. I know you want to look at these guys when you're talking to them, but I'm Larry the Cable Guy. Um, well, no, no, not no, Larry no. The, the Cable, cable guy. guy. Larry the Cable Guy, totally. Get it done. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Larry the Cable Guy, subtle racism. Cable <laughs> Guy, crazy guy. <laughs> yeah. And he wasn't even the best of those comics. Um, yeah. I mean, Ron Jim, White was the best of those. Oh, yeah. comics. I think Jim like, Carrey is like, like you said earlier, it's like he was the true kind of like meteoric rise, and then just immediately mm. plummeted back down did to anybody earth. see the number 23 no it was not bad it i was had a, heard about it. it people hated it i thought it wasn't bad like yeah. he played a psycho and it was in black and white it was like a noir it was actually pretty yeah. cool hmm. it was what? almost like it was almost like sin city like that's oh, kind of really? how like the cinematography okay. it wasn't as stylized but it was very mm. sin city sin city-esque okay. i enjoyed it i remember some i think actually when they were doing the preliminary talks for Spider-Man 4, mm-hmm. Sam Raimi wanted Jim Carrey as Carnage. And he cited the number 23 as his reasoning for wanting Jim Carrey because he's just like, he can, play a psych- he can play a psycho. He can play a homicidal killer. Yeah. And apparently at the time, they were just like, no, Jim Carrey's still one of the biggest comedians ever. We don't want to tarnish his thing. And then all of a sudden, he starts doing more of the serious films. And they're like, oh, well, I guess he's doing that himself. Mm-hmm. Which I would say, Truman Show, fantastic movie. Oh, yeah. And Man on the Moon, fantastic movie. Did you watch the Netflix documentary? I haven't watched the Netflix documentary yet. I hear it's excellent. I watched it. It's very interesting because it's only him. Like You don't really get anybody else talking. Mm -hmm. It's basically just him providing commentary over everything that happened. Mm -hmm. And there's points where he... I think Jim Carrey is on some form of hallucinogen because he's the entire movie he is convinced that Andy Kaufman came back from the grave... And possessed Jim Carrey to make his movie. He's on another plane. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there's these moments where, like, because with Andy Kaufman, we know that there was also uh, Andy Kaufman's famous character, Tony Clifton. Yeah. And there's moments where he's just like, oh, yeah, Tony, Cl- Tony Clifton came back, too. And they're like, I'm sorry, what? And you just go, yeah, yeah, uh, I was possessed by two people. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, ever yeah. since Jenny McCarthy broke up with him, <laughs> it fucked him up, man. <laughs> Well, oh, that, man, happen. Donnie Wahlberg is screwed. That'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> a few microchips got burnt on that. Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> on that, on that well, you know, let's not go down the anti-vaxxer road. But <laughs> <laughs> but what about, uh, uh, so we're back on comedic actors. Comedic actors, let me think. What about? Uh, Belushi. 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 Quick rise to fame. <laughs> Dead. Um, I mean, if you go that road, then you can also say Chris Farley. Farley. Farley was hilarious. Farley didn't do a bad movie. Except for like the one that he did with the guy from Friends. That one was fucking terrible. But that was also his last movie. I didn't care for Brandon Lewis. Really? Hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean Yeah, I wasn't a big fan of Beverly Hills Ninja either. So Oh, Tommy Boy oh, yes, and uh what was yeah. the one? Black Sheep. Black Sheep was oh, really yeah. good as well. God, what the I just had somebody on the tip of my brain that I was like, oh, perfect comedic actor. And it's funny because a lot of these actors are like, go from stand up to like Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, yeah. yeah. Eddie well, Murphy his was stand great. up movies were. Well, I mean, even like Beverly Hills Cop, The Golden Child. No. Yeah. Coming to America. Dude, you, do, you can't deny Coming to America. Coming to America is a masterpiece. It is one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, Eddie Murphy's actually making a m- new movie right now. Yeah, but is it a family movie? Is it a drama? I seriously doubt it's a family movie. Really? Is it another Shrek movie? No, it's Dolomite. Dolomite. 
Wait, Dolomite. is he going to be Dolomite? Yes. yes. He's playing Rudy Ray Moore. Wesley yeah. Snipes is also in it. Really? And he has the most fantastic like uh, handlebar mustache. Really? And he said he actually might keep it. <laughs> but um, I'm not sure if it's like a biopic about Rudy Ray Moore or an actual remake of, of Dolomite. Dolomite. Yeah. Okay. But they say that it's Dolomite, so it's like... Eh, it Richard Pryor. Great comedic actor. Richard Pryor's uh, his his Gene Wilder movies were hit or miss. Um, well, yeah, but I mean, he was way fucked up on Freebase at that point too. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You know, um, Tom Hanks. I mentioned Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks was a great comedic actor. Tom Hanks. I mean, we. I mean, I remember we talked about Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the, the original SNL kind of cast. Yeah. Uh, I Bill know Murray's we, still like makes great movies. Chevy Chase oh, yeah. is an asshole. No, that's very true. Well, I just love yeah, Bill he Murray. The vacation movies way too long. Yeah. So I just love Bill Murray for the fact that he doesn't have to do movies. He just does comedy stuff in the real world. Bill Murray just enjoys being Bill Murray. Oh yeah, he just he just goes around doing what he does. Like, like the last uh, movie I saw with him was uh, uh, Saint Vincent. Oh, that movie that was, was a great. great movie. It, it was, was I didn't, great. I didn't it was with him and Melissa McCarthy. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Happy Time Murders. We got to go see that. Yeah, yeah that's that, true. That, that, one, that one looks amazing. good. Mm-hmm. And Jim Henson's son in the creature shop, they're doing they're doing all the puppets. Well, you know that like the original, uh, he was tr- like there was something going on. There was some controversy behind the yeah. scenes about that because Henson's son was doing it, but the Henson estate was like, uh, yeah, we we frown on this. They're like this is a no no. You can't do this. This goes against kind of like your dad's wishes, and they're just like, dad's you, dead. They're, they're like you do know that like dad made like props and stuff for, like horror movies, right? Have you seen the Dark Crystal? I mean, really. <laughs> And apparently they're making a prequel to that or something that I'd heard. I believe that's a rumor. I know that there's the few there's the few comic books right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like Beneath the Dark and Crystal. You can get those books at Dwight's, Dwight's Comics. Comics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a few of them, yeah. God, I'm still I'm still fighting this. What's the greatest comedic actor? Damn. Man. I remember it's like we also brought up like Adam Sandler, but we're just kind of like uh, Ad- <sighs> Adam Sandler is now at the Adam Sandler had a good run, but now he's a parody of himself. Well, I think it's because Adam Sandler, he kind of like he went from movies that he was co-writing to movies movies that he was writing and producing, and then the skill just started to tip. Where it's just kind of like, okay, you have more good movies than bad movies, and then just went, you have a lot more bad movies than you. Well, do now good he's movies. just pumping them out on Netflix yeah. too. Like we just watched, my wife and I just watched one recently. It was like. His wife was getting married, or his daughter was getting oh, married like, uh, to uh, like Chris, Chris Rock's, Rock's daughter, like, yeah, or his son, or oh, something. Yeah, that I, I, it yeah. was. Yeah. It was okay, but oh, I think a big problem. Something to say. I feel like Little Nicky was that tipping point. Little Nicky was terrible. Oh yeah, no, it was god awful. <laughs> and Quentin Tarantino was also in that movie. Was he really? Yeah. Uh, he so played- was Harvey Keitel. Yeah. Well, he actually played the devil. The devil. Hey, tithead. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, Quentin Tarantino played the same guy that Rob Schneider plays. Where it's like, yeah, get him, Nikki. Kick you him can in do his it. Balls. That's funny. But, it's uh, been years since I've seen it. Well, the Longest Yard was okay, but that was a remake of a remake of an old Burt Reynolds yeah. movie. The original was much better. Yeah, I, I, I liked. But the like original. Little Nicky was that tipping point where yeah. it's like, all right, it's either you know what my favorite uh, Sandler movie is though is Punch Drunk Love. It was his first real dramatic turn. With it was an excellent movie. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell, dude. All right, there you go. Hands down, Will Ferrell. You're my boy, Blue. <laughs> right. You're my boy. I haven't seen him in a shit movie. No. I can't wait for uh, the Sherlock and Holmes movie that he's doing with John C. Riley. Oh really? Oh yeah. Because uh, I think they're doing it again with like uh, Judd Apatow and oh, really? all the people from Step Brothers. So I was just like, oh, I cannot wait for this movie. It's going to be so funny. Like, there's pictures of it online of uh, Will Ferrell as, like, all in costume. Mm-hmm. I think this is the most serious I've ever seen Will Ferrell, but I have a feeling this movie is just going to be hilarious. Well, he was in a movie called Everything Must Go, which was a drama, actually. Really? Yeah, and it almost, like, you see, like, I, I haven't watched it. Mm-hmm. It's on Netflix, or it was, at least, but it's, like, a very serious drama. No, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, y'all talking serious. I got to take yeah, it. And the one that I want to see, but I just haven't because I'm like, I don't want to read a movie right now, is uh, the, what, Casa de Mi Padre? 
those Spanish language oh, yeah, movies yeah, that yeah. he did, yeah. which I'm sure is fucking hilarious, but I don't want to read a movie right now. Right, yeah. It's been in my Netflix queue for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> That'll have to be one for the uh, the Netflix and chill series that we do. But my, my buddy Tom and I do a, a, a pop goulash series called Netflix and Chill that come out between every other I like uh, it. Netflix or come out between every other pop goulash episode. Okay. And we just review a movie we watch on Netflix. And so far, we've done A Place Beyond the Pines, which sucked a major ball bag. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok. And okay. this week, uh, this past week, we did Creep, which I still have to edit and put out, but you'll won't know that because we're, you've heard, heard it by now. So, and then the next yeah. one we're doing after the creep is, um, oh, f- well, I don't want to give it away. Wait, no, no, we mentioned it on the last podcast is uh, uh, Extinction on, it's a oh, Netflix it's original. Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it was Michael Pena. Yeah, Michael oh, Pena's in it. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to talk about it right now because we do a full review on well, it. L- but let me just ask you this. Is, is it worth it? Is it worth to add to your watch list? That's all I need to know. So I'm uh, I don't want to give it away because then nobody else can listen to the next fair fucking enough, episode. So, I understand. That. Um, back to our top Jack Black. Jack. Uh, now Tropic th- Thunder. Was- Tropic Thunder was great. Well, if you're gonna go to Tropic Thunder, I would count that more in the Ben Stiller realm than Jack Black. Yeah. And I think Jack Black is also very more kind of like a niche comedian, whereas like Ben Stiller has kind of written. Just a lot of like Zoolander. He's written like just a lot of comedy. The first Zoolander like, was fucking hilarious. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> but like even still, like Jack Black, like I really liked Jack Black for a long time, and then I got really tired of Jack Black. Did you see the new Jumanji? No, but I heard it's awesome. It is fucking hysterical. Jack Black plays the best teenage girl I've ever seen. Oh, re- <laughs> he is so spot on. Every time he talked, I laughed. Really, it was phenomenal but is there nice. is, is there a movie now that the rock is not in for god's sakes no <laughs> that's okay i'll see a movie with the rock in it funny you mentioned the rock the walmart now have sections entirely dedicated to the rock rock has so many movies out that there's just an entire wall just filled with rock dvds amazing well, yeah because they're, they're they're appealing to the wd the we crowd yeah they'd shop at walmart look mama they got the rock movies <laughs> <laughs> We we go can, smell what the rock is cooking. Look, <laughs> can can you get Tower Heist? I don't think he was in Tower Heist. What was the newest? The, no. Skyscraper. Skyscraper. Get Skyscraper. I got the case of Natty Light. Oh my god. <laughs> AKA. Yeah, there you go. Bootleg yeah. Die Hard. That's what I'm talking about. Did you hear that he got like some shit for that movie because apparently he was an amputee in the movie? Yeah, his character was an amputee in the movie. And real amputees are like, why couldn't they get real amputees to play the part? I don't know, because they're not the fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's because there's this thing called star power, folks. <laughs> and not the star to drive a movie. <laughs> right. And not only that, um, maybe they weren't the person for the part. Yeah, like Scarlett Johansson just backed out of a movie because she was going to play a transgender woman. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, okay, I get it. You want we want to have more diversity in in right. Hollywood and stuff like that, and you want to have transgender people playing the roles. But yeah. then should like a straight white guy only play straight white guys? Yeah, should that kind get, of de- it and, defeats the purpose of acting? Well, it does defeat the pers- purpose of acting, but also it limits people to what they can do. Right. Like, sh- okay, well, in that end, then only Asian people should play Asian characters. Yeah. I mean, obviously, don't go Mickey Rooney and go fucking, like, yes. way racist <laughs> yes. on it. But, like, like the whole Tilda Swinton backlash. Yeah. Like, who gives a shit? Or the Ruby Rose backlash. Yeah. Oh, what, what the fuck? You're, it, it, I don't that, understand the Ruby Rose backlash, because she, one, is a uh, lesbian, right. and so is yeah. Batwoman. What the fuck? Yeah. And I think she's a great actress. I've well, seen her in several... Th- great? I've, mm. Well, she's good. She's I've, good. Look... She's good. Are any of the actors in any of those CW shows great actors? No. So, I mean, they're good. Mm. I think it's it's more of the supporting cast that, in my opinion, the supporting cast is a lot better than the main cast. Yeah. But I think that's the point is that the supporting cast makes the main cast. Well, here, here's the thing. We're going to get Batwoman on TV. How yeah. badass is that? Yeah. yeah. And like a friend of mine's like, oh, they're going to put Batgirl on TV. I'm like, no, 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 no. no, no. no, no. <laughs> It's Batwoman. Let me fuck <laughs> you up with some knowledge here. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm stoked for that. But like, you know, like I understand. Like Robert Downey Jr. would have never gotten away with his role in Tropic, Tropic Thunder. Thunder. You're now, right. Now, now he can no. do that. No, right. no, 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 no. 
You well, people, I, what I do you mean people? people? What, what do you mean you people? people? Well, I remember when that movie was coming out, there was a little bit of backlash because people were like, what? Yeah. He's playing, and all of a sudden, like, Ben Stiller and they all started kind of doing the PR campaign, and they're like, no, his character is that he's a method actor. He gets really into the role, and everyone's like, um, yeah, but why didn't they get a black man to play the role to begin with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you know? it, it, it's one of those things where I'm a dude who's another dude pretending to be another dude. dude. <laughs> another dude. <laughs> but I don't think you're the dude that understands who this dude really is. I know who I am. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's like, look, I'm all about like picking the best person for the role. Right, yeah. You know, and granted, like, I don't want to see a bunch of white people on TV. Look, I am a white people. I'm tired of white people. But at the same time, like, if you got somebody who's great for a role, like, oh, yeah, of course. like if Scarlett Johansson played the role with respect and dignity. Right. You know, like, exactly. Why not? It's like it's one of those things where it's like if you're not disrespecting either what it's based on or the culture well, that's behind. People were all pissed off with Jared Leto uh, in the Texas Buyers Club. Yeah. Well, I have friends in the transgender community that were like, I didn't think it was very respectful. But it is what it is, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. That's just my two cents. I don't. I just, I just host a dumb podcast that I pay for, and nobody pays me for this shit, so what the fuck do I know? So, any hooser. Dude, I just watched Looper again. Dude. I really enjoyed Looper. It's still a good, it still holds up, man. I know, like, I loved it. all of a sudden Chad got animated. He sat up straight. He's like, I like Looper. That's a movie I know. I just love Jeff Daniels' character in the movie. Yeah, he played such a fuckhead. <laughs> I love. I just love the point where he's just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be going to. I'm gonna be going to France. You want to go to China, right?" He's just like, "But I want to go to France. You want to go to China, right?" <laughs> but th- dude, jo- Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that movie is oh, he was fantastic. awesome. Like, and he chose. He chose. He wanted the prosthetics to look more like Bruce Willis. Yeah, which was a great choice. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess such a you... such a clever movie too. Yeah. If you want to look like an asshole, I suppose, but yeah. Yeah. accurate, yeah. But he also had Bruce Willis record all of his lines and then listen to them so that he knew how Bruce Willis would say them. Yeah, that's a next level of acting that I haven't exactly Dude, seen. Dude, Joseph yet. Gordon-Levitt is a fantastic actor. Oh God, yeah. Like I just watched uh, recently for the first time, Five Hundred Days of Summer. I still haven't seen that one. It's a great movie. It was up on, um, like, HBO was having, like, a free week or something like that, and it was up, and I was like, oh, I haven't seen this yet. It was really good. And, like, when you come into it, you're like, 500 Days of Summer? That doesn't even make sense. Come to find out that um, Zoe Dashanel's character's name is Summer, and the 500 Days is the, the length of their relationship. But it was a really fucking good movie. Like, they had a navel gazing bullshit soundtrack but like you know it's all that indie music that so I don't what you're like. saying is 500 days of summer will not be at the top of the list for the greatest soundtracks of all time i would put judgment night above the 500 days of soundtrack oh wow yeah oh, wow. <laughs> wow yeah yeah Dang. but at least judgment night had slayer with iced tea on it you know Cypress Hill and Pearl Jam, Cypress Hill and uh, uh, Sonic Youth. It was an interesting soundtrack, to say the least. Rock of Ages. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes 80s music, Dwight. Oh, everybody likes 80s music. Ow. <laughs> Chad, Chad, just kicked, Chad just kicked his own ass with the microphone. <laughs> A second episode of that happening also. Yes, it was. <laughs> the last one. He well, kicked Sarah his ass. almost rammed the. She's like, talk, mic. whap. <laughs> <laughs> I almost banged my front teeth in, but um, <laughs> but this time it was me, so it was it's phrasing, good. phrasing, giggity. <laughs> <laughs> but ah, fuck! I forgot what I was going to talk about now. Well, um, it must not have been that important. Yeah, obviously not. Um, High Fidelity too also was a really good soundtrack. As well, well, yeah, and well, I mean, it was a great Jack Black role too. That yeah, was as well. the Jack Black role, as far as I'm concerned. Like, there, he has never been better. School of Rock. He was good in School of yeah, Rock. He wasn't. Tenacious. Tenacious. Tenacious yeah. Dude. No, he was pretty much himself. Yeah. Dude, they live. They live. Hold on one second. Yes. Jack Black was in They Live. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I was like, you give me one second. <laughs> no, I think Jack I Black was John like Carpenter. a zygote. But no, I just pulled up like the movies that I've purchased and watched recently. Oh, okay. Dude, They Live. They dude, Live is amazing. Love they Live. That was oh, such Rowdy a good Roddy movie. Piper. Yeah, dude. And Keith David. Right? The seven minute alley fight. No, it was like a 20 minute alley That's fight. True, it's the yeah. longest fight in cinema history, <laughs> which they replicated on South Park. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yes, they it did. It was awesome. I have come here to kick ass and chew, chew bubble, bubble gum, gum, and I'm, and I'm all, all out, out of bubble, bubble gum. gum. R.I.P. Roddy Roddy Piper. Not to mention, they also had Roddy Piper choreograph that entire fight scene. Yeah. And it was real. Yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't fuck around. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Dude, and I finally watched Deadpool 2 again awesome. for the second time. Yeah. It was awesome. better on the second viewing. Like, I enjoyed it the first time around. So I stopped dropping shit. What are you doing? Yeah, Sarah? Sarah's fucking shit up. Oh, this is Bill. A Bill? <laughs> Bill's so down there. <laughs> Sarah's had two wicked whatever it is and a half of vitamin water, and she is toes. <laughs> Bill's down there, and I keep playing footsies with him. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm playing footsies with John, but I keep kicking the chair instead. <laughs> Have you guys seen American Ultra? Yes. Yes. I really want to. It's a good movie. It was actually movie. surprisingly good. Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, yeah. Max Landis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Max Landis, son of famous film like John Landis. Yes. Did you ever watch uh, Max Landis' short film, The Death and Return of Superman? No. It's on YouTube. It's about a 15-minute thing and it's uh it was basically his way of marketing the movie chronicle okay so he's basically just kind of sitting around and he's talking about the storylines about the death and return of superman sure and because he's the son of a famous filmmaker there's a ton of cameos like simon pegg's in it elijah mm -hmm. elijah wood plays cyborg superman Hank <laughs> Shaw. you have uh who else ron howard has a cameo at the end really oh yeah and the entire time he's talking about it, it's all like very like cheaply made. You have uh, what's his name, Eldon Henson, the guy that was uh, Fulton Reed and Mighty Ducks. Okay, he plays Doomsday. Really? And you just have this whole thing, and it's made to be cheesy and funny. And the whole point of it is he talks about how, you know, the death of Superman did not kill a famous hero; it killed death in comics. Yeah. And then of course everyone's like, oh, huh? and then all of course you know. He brings up this moment where he's just kind of like, he goes, I was arguing with my dad when I was a kid. You know, it's just like, he's like, you can't kill Superman. And John Lynch just goes, well, how do you kill a vampire? Uh, steak, sunlight, holy water, silver. He goes, wrong. You can kill a vampire any way you want because vampires don't fucking exist. Right. And all of a sudden from that moment on, I was like, oh shit, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I could literally make up any story. Did you read his uh, his Superman book that he did? The American Alien? Yeah, how was it? I loved it. Really? Because each issue is meant to kind of be like a different stage in Clark's life. Okay. And each one just kind of has like a different tone and they're all done differently. My favorite one is like a college age Clark Kent is like backpacking through like Europe and he ends up being drunkenly mistaken for Bruce Wayne. That's funny. So it's Bruce Wayne's birthday party. So everyone drags Clark Kent onto this yacht and Clark Kent is partying and everyone thinks he's Bruce Wayne. It's awesome. Oliver Queen comes up to him and he goes, you're not Bruce Wayne. You're Clark Kent. He goes, no, no, I'm Bruce Wayne. And all of a sudden, Bruce Wayne walks in. <laughs> like Alfred dropped him off on a speedboat and he goes, I'm Bruce Wayne. Who the hell are you? That's funny. <laughs> and there's all these moments where you're just kind of like, oh, he's a genius for writing all of this. Right. Uh, Max Landis has also said that he's trying to work with DC to kind of do something similar with Dick Grace and Robin. Really? Where it's like he kind of wants to do like another seven issue miniseries kind of chronicling the history mm -hmm. of Robin. Did you read the uh, the New Order? The the Nightwing New Order that came out? I did out? not, but I really wanted good. to. That was good? Yeah, Kyle Higgins right. wrote it. And oh, really? I, okay. I really dug Kyle Higgins' uh, New 52 um Oh, yeah, because he wrote Nightwing. the beginning of it, right? He wrote yeah. the whole thing. Except oh, for the really? very last issue, because they fucked him over on it. DC mm. with the whole uh, uh, what was the evil, uh, um, that whole evil lives or whatever. What was that big event that they did in the new Forever 52? Evil? Forever Evil. Forever Evil. And oh, it took right, yeah, forever yeah. Ever for them mm. to get that finished, and basically yeah. it was just like, you guys write the last issue. Yeah. And then that's when they came out with the Grayson book, like where oh, yeah, he was the yeah. spy. Yeah, where he was the spy story, and then. Uh, if you can't also as well, Max Landis chronicles his entire pitch 
for a Superman weekly that he had pitched to DC back in like 2004, Mm -hmm. where it was kind of a retelling, but not quite. Sure. Because he originally wanted to kind of redo the death of Superman and the return and kind of the DC universe at that point. And Max Landis has a great mind for weaving together a universe. Mm Mm-hmm. But no one So basically wants, they should have hired him. They should have hired Scott him. Snyder. But no one wants to give him a chance. But then again though, I think maybe he just doesn't want to do that stuff either. He just What wants was the last movie that he really did? Was that American American Ultra? Was that the last movie he was really tied to? I think last movie, yes. I know he also Uh-oh. did he did uh, Dirk gently. Chad, Chad, Chad has a, a thought. Uh, at one point, he was attached to do the American Werewolf in London remake. Really? Yeah. I think I recall that, which would have been interesting because his dad made it, yeah. made the original. I am fully against that movie ever being remade. Really? It is perfect just the way it is. <laughs> well, bring Okay. It. Have another wicked, <laughs> fucko. <laughs> okay. okay, bringing up the idea of movies that should never be made, uh, never be remade, uh, just to give it like an example. What is one movie you think should never be remade? For me, one of them should be Breakfast Club. Yeah. Purple Rain. <laughs> Purple Rain. They couldn't remake Purple Rain. Jaws. Well, they did Jaws Two: The Revenge. Uh, Jaws Four: The Revenge. Whatever. Jaws Two is just Jaws Two. <laughs> <laughs> the shark still looks fake. <laughs> Accurate, it does. But. If they just remade it, it would be a CG shark. Not saying that that's bad, because uh, some indie effects company just redid a scene from Jaws four with a CG shark, and it looks fantastic. Well, because you got to think, even in the production of Jaws one, the shark didn't work half the time, and Spielberg yeah. was pissed. Well, that's why they introduced the barrels to signify that the shark is there. Um, but if the shark actually worked. The thing would have leapt out of the water at the beginning and ate Chrissy, and it would have been... Fucking Chrissy, dude. Yeah. I actually met her. She's a fantastic person. <laughs> she... Of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. Horror conventions are the best. But um, no, if the shark actually worked, or if it was CGI in a remake, it would have none of the effect that the original one did. Because you wouldn't have that scene of the shark breaching the water and then Brody saying, you're going to need a bigger boat. Mm -hmm. You're never going to have that effect of it coming out of the water for the first time ever again. Not necessarily. (laughs) Chad is very, very definitive. But like you got to think of this generation, they would look at that movie and be like, eh. You know? That shark looks fake. Why is? It, why were people scared about that? I see the same thing about watching The Exorcist. I'm like, this is scary. Why was this Rosemary's Baby? Come on, dude. At the end, when they're all like, all the old people are like, hail Satan. I'm like, dude, this is a comedy, right? This is supposed to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I feel the same way about Rosemary's Baby, but The Exorcist kind of scares me because the supernatural, I, I kind of believe in that. And she laughs, but I've had experiences where it's like we uh, all nervously laugh. Around. I did too in college on LSD. I blame the drugs. <laughs> Me not on LSD, but I digress. So now I was it was a ghost that pissed on my floor. <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah, a ghost or a fucking leaky toilet. I don't care, but it wasn't me. <laughs> so, all right, what do, what do, what do you what say, you John? I mean, I for me. Breakfast Club should never be remade. Mm-hmm. And I, there was someone that tried to give me an argument. They're like, well, you could like modernize it. And I was like, well, that's the thing about Breakfast Club. It's very, like, it's stereotypical for a reason because mm-hmm. it's meant to break it down. You don't have to remake it. And it's, you know, it's very relatable. But it's funny. I was watching um, this show called Insatiable. It's a new mm-hmm. series on Netflix. Which is like yeah. saying, you know, whatever, because there's like 7,000 new series on Netflix like, like every, every week. week. Yeah. But uh, there's a whole breakfast scene or breakfast club type scene like where she's this. She was kind of a heavy girl and then she mm-hmm. like br- had her jaw broken by a homeless dude. She lost all this weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she's got to try and f- like she goes back to school and she's like, well, what group should I sit with? And it's like the jocks, the the yeah. goth kids, the this, the that, the others, and it was all, and then they started playing Don't You Forget About Me in the background, ha. which was perfect. Nice. Uh, just I just remember this, but going off on Breakfast Club and all the clicks, 
the cast of Wonder Woman 84. Oh, I can't They wait for just that. took a picture posing like the Breakfast Club. Really? Yeah, Gal Gadot put it on like her Twitter and her, and her Instagram. They better make that a, like a variant of one of the... I, I really hope that that's like the Steelbook Edition cover when the movie comes out on Blu-ray and DVD. Because, mm-hmm. you know, everybody would just be like, yes. Right. So do you think they're going to do uh, um, Cheetah as a CGI or do you think they're going to put her in a suit? What I would like is if they did like uh, kind of like how they do the Iron Man suit where some of it is actually made. Mm-hmm. And then like they do kind of like a lot of like CG, like little touch up and enhancements. Uh, but all I'm asking for, at least give me the face. Yeah. Full makeup. Yeah. Everything Kristen else is going to be dope in that, I think. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. And you have Chris Pine with a fanny pack. Yeah. So do you think he's Martian Manhunter, or did you think that... Because uh, he looks the exact same age as he did. Right, right. And they, uh, Mark Bernardin on Fat Man and Batman has been speculating that he will be uh, Martian Manhunter. I would love that. I would love that be a, a, like a nice curveball to throw in there. Mm-hmm. But part of me feels is like, that's just way too smart. <laughs> the studio would never do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know what, though? Patty Jenkins would. Yes, I can see that. I would, I would love for Martian Manhunter to be introduced... And then have Chris Pine go off and do a solo film of it and do it mm-hmm. awesome. Did you read the Martian Manhunter solo series? I did not read the miniseries, no. Uh, Rob Williams did a phenomenal job on really? it. Really? Because basically he took Martian Manhunter and basically separated him into like five different personalities. Where it's like one of them was an FBI agent. One of them was like an elderly kind of like retired superhero. One of them was like a little kid. And so is that series kind of like to explain where he fucked off between during this time of the uh, New 52? Not quite. Okay. Because this was like during the DCU where they're like, yes, the door is open. We don't care about continuity anymore. Okay. Uh, but like they brought Mars back and basically at the end of it, like all the characters are just kind of like, okay, we have to form the Martian Manhunter or else Earth will die. And we, you know, we know how much Earth actually has meant to Jean as like a second home. Right. And they're like, we have to let Mars go by the end of it. I think it only had like maybe like like 13 or 14 issues, but it was still right. pretty solid for it. Yeah. And really that's can't. what I like kind of what they've done with him in Supergirl. Yeah. Which I thought was funny because they originally introduced him. His name was Hank Henshaw. Right, yeah. The, the yeah, Cyborg the, Superman. The Cyborg Superman, right. But yeah, but come to find out, he was really John Jones, and now they're like, oh, you're John Jones now. They do, like they don't even mention the fact that they had originally referred to him as Hank Henshaw, which I find funny. And Red herring. Are we falling apart over here? Yeah, every now and again. Technically. Yeah, well, I keep talk, talking. All right, but we, we keep on running. I don't know. Yeah. Keep Dwight looks running. like he's about to pass out. Well, you know, the Smirnoff is starting to kick in. He's had like ah, two yes. shots of Smirnoff, three Sarah, shots of Smirnoff. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, what, mo- what movie would you never yes. have remade? <laughs> yeah, th- while we're f- fucking with Dwight, what movie would you think is not to be remade? Oh, Breakfast Club was mine, because that's just a classic. Um, that burned going down. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't remake Clueless. I just watched the other day because I was like, vintage Paul Rudd. It's still... What do you mean vintage Paul Rudd? He hasn't aged since 1995. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Did you say that about Keanu Reeves, too? Whoa. That's true, too. But I wouldn't Whoa. remake those two. Yeah. Yeah. I just... But there's a lot where the people are going to be like, Aunt, we're going to remake it. Because they remake everything now, and it's disappointing. Yeah, but they haven't touched Fast Times at Ridgemont High, so they're not... That's and that's true. another Amy Heckerling film. They're not going to retouch. Yeah. They're not going to... that Talk about rapey. Woo. There were a few scenes in there. I was like, mm. are you okay there? You know, there, will, there was there was another <laughs> chair behind you you could have sat upon. It's fine. I am tall in this chair. <laughs> She's like, I'm finally I bigger than all you fuckers. I see over all of you. <laughs> That's Aurora. We never go to Aurora. <laughs> right? Where I grew up. <laughs> so... But for me, The Princess Bride. Do not yes. touch The Princess Bride. That movie is a classic. Even the, Or to that end, The NeverEnding Story. Yes. Never touch The NeverEnding Story. Okay. Part of me at one point was also going to say the original Star Wars, but then I was like, wait a minute, George Lucas already did that five times. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes he has. 
Yeah. Well, they'll never remake those. No. At all. no. And they'll never release the original cuts ever. Oh, I don't know. Fox. They did. Huh? They did on the. They did on a DVD release, I yeah, recall. Yeah, on the special edition DVDs, they had the original cuts. Yeah, and I don't see why they just can't take those masters and remaster them. Well, someone did. <clears throat> uh, it's called the Star Wars Despecialized Edition. Yeah, the, which is at a bootleg at it's a con. It's a bootleg, yeah. But, I mean, if you're a Star Wars... But knowing cast, now that D- Disney just bought Fox, Fox had all the rights to those... The, they, the originals have to be. And I like George Lucas was always like, well, we we used all of the, the footage and we can't really, there's not enough footage left of the original cut. Fuck you. You got to tell me that there's not a print out there that you can't find. Right, yeah. You can't find one solid print that's in good enough condition to remaster it. Or at least like enough decent copies that you can stitch together yeah. an original one. Yeah. Whatever, oh, Lucas. Yeah. You know how much more money they would make if they could do that, though? Oh, yeah. Like, they would make all of the money. They would probably make up everything they spent on Fox. Pro- probably, and then some. And Did then you some. hear that they uh, they shelved uh, New Mutants? And uh, From uh, what I've heard, Dark Phoenix will still be released. Uh-huh. New Mutants has been completely canned. Dude, I was looking forward to New Mutants. I was looking forward to New Mutants more than I was Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Just because it's like New Mutants has got a pretty solid cast. Well, not only that, but it's a horror take on right. Yeah, it, yeah that, and, and it that almost, was what <clears throat> turned me off from it. I was like, eh, it almost know. reminds me, like if they would have set it in the school that that uh, in Deadpool two. Oh yeah, that would have been perfect. Because then it would have awesome. linked everything together. Oh yeah, like even more so than you know. Mm-hmm. Can we get any more characters in here? Yeah. But I also heard with the Fox acquisition that apparently Disney is not like they're just going to hold on to stuff. They're not going to do anything with it. Really? Like apparently from what I've heard is like they're going to shelve any related projects with Alien. They're going to shelve any related projects post the Predator because it doesn't quote fit like the corporate values. And they Mm -hmm. don't know at the time how they can translate it into a so-called family. They're like, look, can we put this in Disney World somewhere? No? Fuck it. Well... How how much do you know about Disney World? I've been there a few times. Do you remember back in like, I think it was like the late 80s, early 90s, there was a ride called the Terrestrial Experience? No. So at the time, there was this like kind of the head CEO of Disney and he was trying to figure out how... Yeah, can, Michael Eisner. Yeah, Michael Eisner. Michael Eisner was trying to figure out how to like ramp up numbers. How do we get people to come to Disney? And he decided to go to his teenage son, Breck. And his teenage son was just... That's his first mistake. You never name your son Breck. Well, you can always go the Jason Lee route and name your kid Airplane Inspector. That's fine. At least it it doesn't... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Pilot Inspector. Yes, Pilot Inspector. Jason Lee named his kid... But it's Inspector with a K. But at least it doesn't sound like something you say when you're trying to throw up. (laughs) 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 True. So Breck... A little bit, yeah. So Breck said that he's just like, yeah, he's like, you don't have anything for teenagers. He's like, well, how do we, like, this is a family park. How do we get stuff for teenagers? And all of a sudden he goes, alien. I'm sorry, what? So then they called George Lucas, and George Lucas was partnering with, like, Ridley Scott and everybody to get an alien ride at Disney World. And then the Imagineers were just kind of like, no, we can't do this. This is almost impossible. And then they came up with this idea where they're like, yes, how about, like, this alien company comes up with a teleporter and it goes horribly wrong and you have this alien monster that tries to like attack people. And for like close to like eight years, this thing was around and it was supposed to be an alien ride and people got terrified. People were putting in complaints and everyone's like, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to ruin everything? Look, bitch, Mm -hmm. terror was in the The name. name. (laughs) And you you look at it and uh, what was the principal from Ferris Bueller? He was in it. Was this before or after he was convicted for touching children? Yeah. This was before, and okay. the reason the ride got canned was because all of that came to light. Interesting. Because they were just kind of like, oh, oh, he's he's a wasn't, child diddler. Wasn't he in Howard the Duck as well? Yeah. Filzy. Okay. Yeah. And he was also in Beetlejuice. Yep. He was. I just love your faces the entire time. <laughs> so I was saying that, you were just like, oh, God. 
Was it because you were excited from the idea of this ride or just the history behind it? If you could stop the picture and slow it down, you can see the exact moment in which his heart broke. (laughs) Good reference. But uh, no, I always thought it was Dave McKean that was in uh, Beetlejuice as the dad. And not Michael McKean? McKean. McKean. No, not Michael McKean. Yeah, he went a long way around. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Someone's pulling up IMDb right now. (laughs) No, Michael McKean was in, in, well... And Spinal Tap. Yeah, I'm getting names mixed up here. Um, it's those Reds apple. Exactly. It's those Reds, yeah. But Ridley Scott should never be in charge of anything alien related ever again after Prometheus. Fuck you, Prometheus was awesome, and so was Covenant. I should not have to buy a three disc Blu Ray to understand that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you had a hard time understanding the movie. No, I understand. I understood it perfectly, but just like uh-huh. words, Jack. Use your Use words. words. Use your words. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need another shot of cold cock? No, <laughs> but um, they <laughs> made me so mad. <laughs> <clears throat> I just feel like James Cameron or Neil Blomkamp should be in charge of that franchise from now on. Because Ridley Scott is driving it into the ground. If it was James Cameron, we'd be waiting another decade for it to come out, much like the second Avatar. Nobody's going to give a fuck about Avatar exactly. when it no, comes out. No one gives a shit about Avatar World at Disney. <laughs> Which I hear is amazing, though. It's cool for like 10 minutes. Have you been there? Oh, I worked. At, I lived and worked at Disney for seven months last year. Were you a crew member? I was a cast member. A cast member. Yes. But Ooh. the only cool thing there is Flight of Passage. The other thing is a glorified tunnel of love with the animatronic is always broken. So you never even get to see it. It's not <laughs> worth it. But I hear the floating mountains that they did look pretty damn badass. If you actually take the buses to get to the park, if you look to the left, you can actually see all the metal and framework behind it. Stop ruining the magic, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> He was not a bitter ex-employee. No, no. No, I loved it because every Thursday was drinking nights. Oh, well. Can't complain. As opposed to Dwight's. Yeah, yes, Dwight's every Dwight. Friday night. Yeah, that's right, every Friday night. And if you stop by Dwight's on a Friday and you bring a bottle, we'll we get... won't finish that. Yeah, we won't finish that. Nah. But Neil Blomkamp, <laughs> Neil Blomkamp <laughs> is too busy rebooting RoboCop. He shouldn't go near Alien until he reboots RoboCop. He shouldn't go to, towards RoboCop. The original w- was perfect. <laughs> Ooh. It's not even a remake. It's a sequel to the first one. No. And he already confirmed. Well, okay. He, he already confirmed. But on Twitter, he already said that the only person that he would want to play RoboCop is Peter Weller again. Yeah, Isn't no. Is he like 90? Yes. No. The last good thing Peter Weller did was play Batman in uh, The Dark Knight Returns. Okay, yeah, that's pretty accurate, but that's also the last thing he did. I don't think so. Star Trek Wrath of Khan. What? Star Trek Wrath of Khan. Star Trek was the second one. Uh, yeah, yeah I was just he was the, the captain of the USS Vengeance. Yeah. yeah. But um, Dark Knight Returns was Into Darkness. That. Yeah. Wow, they connect. Star Trek Into Darkness Dark Knight you know, Returns. You know Peter Weller also has like three PhDs, right? Like he also does like a lot of History Channel stuff. So it's not it's not like he's not acting. He's he's doing history. Acting. Acting. Yeah, he's uh well he has various PhDs in art as well, and he's a very big art aficionado, but then again he has a PhD in it. Why wouldn't he be? But um, blah 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 blah. I'd buy that. Agreed. Dollar. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Moving on. It's movies though, so it's all good. Yeah, but yeah, no, they shouldn't remake Princess Bride. If you two aren't quoting movies, you're fighting about movies. This is what happens every day at Dwight's Comics. Please stop by. <laughs> But I work at a shitty video store. I want to work at a good video store. <laughs> nice. Oh. All right. I think we're good. Yeah. 
yeah. Dwight looks like he's half about ready to pass yeah, out. Ready to go, go to he's bed. he's drifting. So uh, don't forget September first at uh, Dwight's Comics, twenty three zero seven West Schomburg Avenue. I is, is that the new Schomburg, Schomburg Road? Is that Schomburg the new address? Road. That is the new address. The new address. Fourteen fifteen West Schomburg is the old address. All right, don't go to fourteen fifteen. They won't be there anymore. No, 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 so no, check no. out the new Dwight's Comics, the uh, Thai restaurant that's in your shopping square. Yes, Dan Thai, Dan Thai not Dan bad. Thai. Very we, good. We used Very to eat good. there a lot, but then my father in law ordered something and found a hair in it, and now we won't eat there anymore. I'm like, it's just been one time. Yeah, it's just yes, one Chad. hair. It's yes, Chad, tell hair. them the story of your experience with the Thai place. <sighs> okay, I got sick there once, but that wasn't a, a week old pad Thai. It was my fault. Yeah, that is absolutely your yeah, fault. Yeah, very much your fault. Hey, this pad Thai looks good. How long has it been there? I don't fucking care. <laughs> Give it to me. I'm hungry. Pretty accurate, actually. But, I mean, oh my God, try their yellow curry. It's Dude, try their green papaya salad. Dude, green papaya salad. Green Tell papaya more. salad. Yeah, it's shredded green papaya with it's tossed in like fish sauce and and like a vinegar, with like hot peppers chopped up in it and peanuts. Oh my god, it's fucking ridiculous. It's so good. You said fish sauce, and that kind of turned me off to it. But I'll try. It's it. traditional, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, dude, like go anywhere in Southeast Asia, you're gonna have fish sauce in your food. Accurate. I mean, I. I I've had way too many recipes I've had to cook that required fish sauces. Yeah, well, and it but... smells like assholes and garbage, but it's delicious. Yeah. But... Assholes and garbage. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, they, they, they're they in even Fortune House, the Chinese place. Fortune House is good. Fortune, Fortune House. House good. Fortune House, though, like, y- you can't have them deliver it. If they deliver it, by the time you get your stuff, it's soggy and mush, and I can't... Like, if I get Chinese food, I have to eat it there. I, I can't do delivery or takeout anymore because... If I'm ordering orange chicken or General Sal's chicken, I need to eat it when it's fresh and crispy. Because if I get it mush, I'm like this. Uh, that no. reminds me, I turned Dwight off to use Mandarin on yeah. golf. Yeah, they, really? Oh my god, that was like your favorite place was my in the favorite world. Favorite place in the world, and then Chad you know, ruined it for me. I have this thing where I go places for the first time, and it's always the worst experience I have. Me. Dwight, Cindy, and my girlfriend Kayla went to uh, Bahama Breeze one night. Well, that was your first mistake. <laughs> well, okay. Everyone you might else... as well have gone to a fucking Jimmy Buffett concert. <laughs> you would have probably Actually, seen yeah. just as many Republicans. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Topical. Topical. But, Bazinga. Um, but yeah, no, we went there. We waited, what, four hours for four the food? Four hours for the food. Four Dude, I would have left. fucking hours. Why did you wait that long? I was drinking. He was. You could have drank somewhere else <laughs> and not waited that. You could have gone to the tap house over on Barrington Road and not have waited. Speaking of taps, they said that their water machine was broken. Yeah, Where? They, they said that their they water broken. machine. You mean the faucet, the faucet? <laughs> yeah. that you turned? The, 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 yeah, the waiter said that the, uh, yeah, the, the water machine was broken. Um. Yeah, and that was just the start of you know what. Have what, you guys been to that that Greek uh uh world street food place that's in that same shopping center? No. no. Ooh, is it good? Is it good? I don't. I don't, I don't oh. That's why I'm asking. Have you oh. been there? I'm looking for a recommendation. Never. Have you been to uh, Kuma's Corner? Oh God, I, was, I recommended it to Dwight, but I don't. Oh. I don't he do won't heavy go metal. because he I doesn't like heavy metal. I can't do heavy metal, dude. I'm, I'm, no. You can sit outside and not get bombarded. I they were playing some punk rock when I was in there earlier this week. I had their Zeppelin burger. Oh my god, that's so my go-to. Good. So good. I mean, I want to try it, but I, you know, I, you know, you know they I'm, deliver I'm old on and cranky Gru- now. So. Grubhub delivers. Oh but well, it's there so we go. expensive on Grubhub. Yeah. Granted, it's expensive at Kumas, but like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Like, I, I the- wouldn't, it wouldn't have been so bad had I ordered two, had I not have ordered the two beers. The beers cost more than my lunch. Yeah. Have you tried their jalapeno poppers? No. Oh my god! Next time you go there, get those. I've had their nachos. I've never had their nachos though. I mean, they're fucking good. Their jalapeno poppers. Uh, the insides are mixed with cream cheese and uh, chorizo. Ooh, I have had those. Yes, the they're first great, time I went, right? I, I had those. Yes, they're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. Wow, Chad hadn't been this excited. <laughs> There's two things I get excited about: food and horror movies. Dude. I don't even have a comeback for that. I'm, mm. I'm, wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. Have you seen Tusk? I haven't yet. Ooh. And once again, huge Kevin Smith fan, but I've only seen like bits and pieces. That will be uh that's gonna be 
three Netflix and chills from now. Ooh. Three or four Netflix and chills. Okay. From now. I'm going to watch that yeah. and listen to that episode. Yeah. It's good. All right. These guys are tired. It's we've been like two and a half hours. This is the longest pop goulash I've done in quite some time. Wow! Well, so we had a lot to talk about. Yep, we're glad to break some records. Right. Well, uh, thank you guys for coming in again. Anytime that you guys want to stop by, just let me know. We'll set this up. Well, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, too. Thank you. We we had a blast, and you know, and and I got to do some drinking, and um, that's always a good thing. Yeah, you didn't drink the last time you were here. That's right. So I had to make up. Um, and yes, we will definitely be back. Um, and my last shameless plug, please come over to Dwight's Comics at 2307 West Schaumburg. Um, soft opening this Thursday. Um, our grand Thursday, the 24th, 23rd, I'm sorry, 23rd of August to 23rd of August and our grand opening on September the 1st. Um, of September. Yes. First of September, (laughs) September September 1st of September. Yeah. Come, come say hi to John and Sarah and Chad and, 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 um. What's, what's my wife's name again? Cindy. 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 Yes. Somebody's in trouble when he gets home. <laughs> no, but thanks so much for having us. We oh, really anytime. enjoyed it. Anytime. If they come in and say floor pisser, I'm going to be like, well, fuck out of here. So, yeah. So, if you if you uh, go into to the store, just say floor pisser. And <laughs> see what happens. See what happens. See what so. Happens. But uh, but yeah, I'm glad you guys came in. It's been a lot of fun. Maybe next time Sarah will talk more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and and John won't because right. John, you're you're a content man. Like yeah, for John, sure. John's our talker. Oh, uh, I call him the Rolodex because he always knows, and it's like all right. And then they get on. I don't get a word in edgewise anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, there was the one night where we were all drinking in Dwight's basement, and God forbid, Pissing on floor. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Oh my god. The Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters started playing. We're sitting on the couch. I'm in the middle. They put on Ghostbusters. It's playing and they're quoting it the entire time. I could have smacked him. <laughs> like, I'm like, are we kidding right now? Like, we're watching the movie. You don't have to sit here and quote it the entire fucking time. <laughs> Angry Sarah. As you win. <laughs> we were both dr- oh, okay. Well, I know I was drunk for sure, but it's just what we do, man. Like we work hard, when, we party hard. When movies come on, you have to ex- expect it, especially Ghostbusters. It's a it's a classic. This bitch is toast. Yes, Chad. If you're going to say a quote, say a quote now, Sonny Jim. <laughs> I grabbed the mic and I backed out real quick. It's like, uh. I was like, do I say that? Do I not? But I was going to say, if you're God, you say yes. Right. Oh, uh, all right. So <laughs> I'm glad I didn't drink a whole lot tonight. Um, but for uh, for Pop Goulash this week, I'm Ruben. I'm Dwight. I'm Chad. I'm John. I'm Sarah. I'm Cindy. (laughs) (laughs) Have yourself a great week and be kind to one another.